weekend for doing that song for us yes the ai version of the weekend Got without it. the extra e right is that how right it is? yeah something like that yeah. it's the weekend with an a so yeah that was uh yeah people seem to be getting the kick out of the ai song so we got to bring the artist behind the song here He's not necessarily the singer, but I think he did uh, technically write the song. Our boy, Fantas Matt, what is going on, man? <laughs> yeah, that was a little collaboration with my buddy, The Weekday. <laughs> you know, so the weekend, the weekend wasn't available, so I had to do Weekday. That's, but, about, that's yeah. about right for us. That's what we can get. Well, yeah. You get what you can yeah. afford, right? Yeah, We need for people sure. that, that work for free here, so, and I don't yeah. think he does. Yeah. But uh, welcome, man. We got some interesting topics to discuss tonight, and uh, it's going to be fun. And a lot sure. of people in the chat already. And have no fear, boys. Tom Atkins' great grandson is here, Ryan, and he's bringing the pussy. That's baby. right. I'm bringing the pussy, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> That's the, all the Good. pussy we get on the dead pitch. <laughs> That's true. That's exactly right. That is exactly true. <laughs> but um yeah welcome man how are you i'm doing great man how are y'all we're just uh keeping it creepy here on a sunday night uh first uh round table discussion in over a month or so so it's uh definitely cool to get everybody back and the link is posted on the youtube members section and on patreon if anybody else has the balls to join in isn't that right uncle bill yeah that would be uh that'd be too much to ask i believe because most people that are on our board are always like oh you guys did this wrong and you guys did that wrong but then when it comes like getting on here that like, i'm sorry i gotta take a shit i can't do it <laughs> no they don't even listen like we did the show on uh our uh buddy brian peck i don't think he's our buddy or anything but People were like correcting us before they even listened to the whole fucking thing. Like, oh, y'all didn't even mention the spot where the kid has his water hose hanging out and shit. You dummies. Well, <laughs> well they they were like, you didn't mention the, the part where he pissed on himself, but like that's later on in the episode. <laughs> it's like, well, I mean, here's what I've learned, man. Like people will fucking bitch about a fucking sunny day. It don't matter. Like they will bitch about anything. So mm -hmm just kind of go on do whatever i think like on stuff like that you have to listen to the whole thing before you even should bitch or could bitch about anything somebody walk outside and be like has a fucking rainbow shit i hate my life <laughs> no 
fucking rainbow. Fuck you. The stunt man. He had to go. Green screen set up there and everything, you know. <laughs> hey, I'm that's always his real, ready. That's his real collection. Well, everybody knows that. <laughs> yeah. How Wait, are you well, doing tonight, buddy? I'm good, but uh, people were actually complaining about that show. What's going on? They upset well, about they, the whole glory hole thing or what? What they were doing was more like saying that we should have talked about this, this, or this. Like, right. And then we actually did talk about it, but it was later in the show. So I guess like 10 minutes in, they're fucking typing like, hey, look. Yeah. <laughs> Google critics is what I call them because they just Google everything and act like they know everything and they can go shit and fall back in it. That's what I was saying. <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, it, I feel that it was kind of weird that, you know, Brian Peck had such a, you know, past in the horror genre and nobody mentioned it at all. Like, I mean, everybody's talking about the Nickelodeon stuff or whatever, but yeah, he has quite a big career in the horror genre and it just wasn't, there was nobody bringing it up for whatever reason. So we felt the need. Yeah. So shit on that. But, um, yeah, lots of people in the chat. Rambo is in the chat. If he wants to join in, uh, shoot him a link. Um, he's more than welcome to join in. Crater is in here. Dirk, Mike B, Jackson, Jack, Russell, Matthew Black, Steve is, I think he's been asleep for at least the last eight hours or so. <laughs> I doubt that he will be in here. The mayor says he has a PhD in Google. Huh? So, but yeah, I mean. As always, guys, open topic tonight, whatever you guys want to talk about. The lead off, though, which is, it, we'll go ahead and talk about it because I don't want to forget. I'm bad for that. Title the fucking episode one thing and not even talk about it. I've done it before. 25 Years of Disrespect is the name of the, the Horror Roundtable episode. And it's 25 years since the original Blair Witch Project came out 1999 hard to believe it's been that long ago at this point and there's all kinds of news about that franchise and stars and producers and everything with the original movie are pissed off and i didn't realize this the big thing was artists and entertainment back before it was even Lionsgate, they bought the movie from the the original producers and filmmakers and everything for $1 million. And the studio ended up, I think it was seven or $8 million just for marketing. And we all know what that movie made. So I don't know, you know, if the actors, how much residuals they got, they're pretty pissed off about it. Um, I think Josh Leonard is the one that's, that had the quote 25 years of disrespect from the studio because they're, you're putting together a new like reboot of the franchise, the Blair Witch franchise, which let's be honest, it's going to suck. It's going to be terrible. Like it's not going to make any money either. Much like the other movies, the sequels. Yeah. There's two that. reboots that they've done. Yeah. So, I mean, we just want to kind of talk about that because we haven't really had the chance to discuss it. And the Blair Witch Project, the original movie, is one of those weird instances where some people call it a classic. Some people say it's a piece of shit, right? Um, so we'll talk about that as well. I've always loved the movie, but I can definitely understand why, you know, if you're not into that sort of thing, it is... Yeah, it could be a difficult watch. I couldn't imagine watching it in a movie theater. I never did do that. But uh, I got to say, though, that that might be the best example of you really had to be there at that time to mm -hmm. understand why that movie was so popular. Like, mm -hmm. in, in terms of to, to get an idea of the hype around that movie and the fact that a lot of people, when they went to see it even, thought it was real. Mm -hmm. I mean, you really have to just understand like what was going on at that time. Yeah. Generation did, gap. Did you guys see it when it, like when it came out or did you get oh, caught yeah. up in the hype at all? 
I had yeah. seen, I didn't see it in a the theater. I had gotten, I was trading wrestling tapes and stuff around this time period, like the early days of the internet. That was my first foray into websites and everything is, uh, I was trading wrestling tapes with collectors and this was one of the early movies that was bootlegged, um, right as it was coming out in theater. So I saw, I think I watched it the best way you could watch it. It was like a second generation VHS tape from like a festival screener tape or whatever they were doing at the time. And me and a buddy of mine watched it. I don't know. I don't, Uncle Bill, was it you that watched it with me or it may have been somebody else? I can't remember. I don't think it was me. I remember watching it like at home around that time. But yeah, I watched it in the summer in the middle of the day on a, you know, like I said, second generation tape. And yeah, I was kind of floored by it. I was very, like we knew it was bullshit by that point because I knew enough to go on IMDb even back then. I was like, oh, okay. But just the creativeness involved in this movie and the fact that it's old school in that you never see the witch at all. Like it tricks you into trying to go back and rewind. And what was that? Was that, did I see something there or whatever? So I really love that aspect of it too, is you never really see anything in the movie. And I remember when we interviewed the directors, which you can go on the Patreon page and check that out. We interviewed both of the directors at the same time telling the story of hey we went in we took some of our budget went into circuit city bought this camcorder or a couple of camcorders or whatever it was on the, on our credit card and then filmed the movie in two weeks and then returned the fucking cameras like that was the the kind of budget they were dealing with um with that movie so the fact that it went on to become the phenomenon it did is pretty amazing I was uh, watching the the Guardian, the William Friedkin movie, the other day, and um, there's an interview on that disc with Friedkin, and he was talking about, like at the time, modern horror movies that he was that really stuck with him, and one of them was the Blair Witch Project, and he even lumped in the the two Paranormal Activity movies at the time when he did that interview. Apparently, those were, you know, kind of more recent but yeah he was talking about how you know the Blair Witch and the two paranormal activities you know they were so such low budget movies that were just able to stick with people you know and you can't do that now like Uncle Bill was saying there's just no way that you can ever recreate a movie like that because it's a product of its time you know pre or early internet days uh, people aren't shocked at, at that type of thing anymore. Anyways, it would have to be, I don't know what, what shocks people now. What, what about a movie makes, what about a movie sticks with people anymore? It's kind of hard to gauge that, but I'd be, I'd be shocked if they made a fucking original movie that wasn't a Marvel film or something like that. Disney (laughs) Disney or Marvel or both. Make something new. You know what the the I watched that movie again probably not even two weeks ago the original Blair Witch it was before we no it would been it was right before we went to uh, Whorehound so whenever mm. that was like about a month ago, and, about a month ago now and the thing that surprised me the most about watching it now like how many ever years later is how well they did the thing where they act like you're not acting. Like, do you know how hard that would, that is, or that would be to act, to be, to act like you're not even like acting, to act like it's like, you know, everything that you're coming in contact with is, you know, you're really coming in contact with it and that you can catch people acting really easily and stuff. But for some reason in that movie, you almost never catch anybody acting. Like it seems very organic and real, like throughout the entire, the entire movie. Mm Mm-hmm. That's that's fairly interesting that uh, somebody like Friedkin would actually be a fan or even like it. Um, yeah. I guess I could see him sort of being a fan of that sort of guerrilla style filmmaking, you know, like. But did he talk about like actually seeing it and like being into it or? No, no, okay. it was just more of a brief kind of a, you know, 
interview on the it was just a real brief part of the interview on that guardian disc uh screen factory put out but um just something that's such a low budget project that ends mm -hmm. up being effective i guess was more more along the lines of what he was talking about okay what's up man <laughs> alpha what's up, guys what are you doing oh cool. is everybody doing tonight doing we're, talk cool. we're talking some blair witch before i forget and um it's not a disrespect Blumhouse, and that's the worst kind of disrespect that you can have, right? Blumhouse redoing your franchise. They have so here's good, what's going to happen. I'm going to prepare record, everybody right? for this reboot. All right, you ready? Let's hear Heather it. Donnie, Heather Donahue's back. She has a shotgun. <laughs> she has a shotgun. She's going after the Blair Witch. She gets dropped off by a helicopter into the woods. <laughs> She's like, I'm going to kill this motherfucker this time. She finds her and or him, unloads a shotgun into it, hides in a basement. The Blair Witch floats down there, catches it, sets it on fire. There you go. <laughs> Thanks for subscribing, <laughs> Alex's right. Horror. Yeah. Alex's Horror of it's just overall horror that Alex brings. So I I didn't get to see the movie, of course, in theaters because I was, you know, way too young for two. that. Two, you were two. <laughs> exactly, I was four. <laughs> I was four actually. Um, <laughs> Jeez. But um, I remember watching it for the first time. I want to say I was like ten. It's time. It's crater well, time. Crater. <laughs> How's it going, everybody? You doing crater? Oh. But I remember renting that from. Hollywood video and I always liked the movie up until the ending. I just hated the way it ended. That was my problem with it still to this day. It's just how it ends. That was my favorite part of it though, really. Yeah, I'm kinda Same. with you. Yeah. Like I mean, to me it was a callback to the beginning of the movie, which I thought was pretty cool. Yeah, it? and I think that's the brilliant really? part of the Blair Witch project is that everything is set up in the first ten minutes of the film and it uses all the mythology when they're going through the town interviewing all these random people about everything, uh, they're kind of using that mythology to build out through the rest of the movie. So by the end of it, you kind of got it. But that was actually a reshoot, I think. Well, evidently, we got news here from the director himself. He's been hired, David Gordon Green, with the $5 <laughs> super chat. Been hired to make Blair Witch Believer, Blair Witch Kills, and Blair Witch Ends. So, you know, it's funny <laughs> that news comes up with all this Blair Witch um, reboot stuff because, you know, like, like Uncle Bill said, we just went to that horror hound about a month ago where they had the cast there. And, you know, and someone in here, I can't remember who it was, they mentioned that, you know, it was just a product of its time. And you just kind of had to understand what it was like when that film came out. So, but going back to what I was talking about, horror hound, I noticed a lot of super young fans going to meet some of these cast members, you know, anywhere between their teens to their early 20s uh had to be and i was like you know it's like someone also said you know if you watch that something like that nowadays then you know you wouldn't really like it wouldn't be that special to you You wouldn't really get it but like how it was back in the you know the late 90s so like i'm just curious of like how people that age now are looking at this as like having a cult following like how did they get into that movie I think it'll always work just because of the performances of the cast. Like yeah. if, if the performances are bad in that movie, that movie does not work, but you actually believed what they were, what they were going through, you know? Well, yeah, if because I was, it, was, it was more that was because of like, there wasn't really an internet presence back then. And it wasn't like, well, everybody and their, and their brother was on the internet saying, well, that movie's fucking fake. So, you know, you right. know, there's no reason to believe that shit's real. Right. <laughs> like people with wrestling yeah. and shit. Like, Don't you know wrestling? <laughs> yeah, <exactly. laughs> yeah but, everybody wasn't out to expose everything back then. Right. You know what you mean? Yeah. Here's the thing, though, that I was thinking. Like, I was thinking, like, okay, how did younger people get into it? I'm imagining, like, how did I get into, like, Dawn of the Dead? That movie was made in the fucking 70s. It was, like, through my dad, right? <laughs> so I'm assuming that, like, most of these kids, like, their parents are, like, watching it or talking about it or something like that. And they're like, that, that's the only explanation. That's, that yeah. has to be what it is because, like, you know, a lot of the movies that I love that are horror films is mainly because of my dad. Uh, you know, he was the first one to introduce me to Night of Living Dead, Nightmare on Elm Street, Texas Chainsaw Massacre, you know, all the, the classics. My dad loves them. And he 
does to this day. So, yeah, I always kind of yeah. refer to the Blair Witch Project as my generation's Texas Chainsaw Massacre in a way. Because it's like, like when I was a kid growing up, like I always heard like all the adults around me that grew up during that time period when Texas Chainsaw came out, they would always talk about it. But it was always polarizing. It was always like, oh, we always heard it was so scary. But then I watched it and it was so stupid. And who wants to watch that? <laughs> then you'd hear the other adults ever saying, that was the scariest moment of my life watching Texas Chainsaw Massacre. So when I grew up and I actually watched it for the first time when I was, I don't know, 13, whatever I was like. It just worked for me, whereas the other people that I knew that were into horror were just like, oh, that was the stupidest movie I ever saw. So it, I think it's got the same polarizing effect as Blair Witch does. What? Of- what the fuck oh. happened here? Jeez. I got to hear this story. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> well, she did seem like, I don't right. know if you noticed this, Crater, but she seemed like she was out of it, man. Uh, yeah, I did. You all talked about that on a previous stream, and I that was something I noticed right off the bat was that I was like, she's got to be high or something. Oh, because. she's hiring groceries. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> she's real high. Carter Denture with a five dollar super chat. Appreciate it, man. She uh he says the witch looking lady they interviewed in the beginning had a fence made of bundled sticks and twigs. Which I guess that was an actress because uh, I don't know how that's like perfect casting, but that's you see a lot of those people around here. Uh, it's fucking comments, bro. Y'all kill midnight balls uh, already. Damn. Show the next one, CK. Yeah, <laughs> next one's even better. Right? <laughs> That's I not would... that not believable. Yeah, I could totally believe that right now. Yeah. Well, I mean, um, didn't she change her name or something to like Lotus Blossom or something like that? She oh, did God. because I, I seen uh, one of their co stars, I think the guy that plays Michael, maybe. I seen someone share one of his Facebook posts, and I so I just started getting nosy. And I went to his Facebook and he had tagged her in it. And that was, I seen she had some kind of like Lotus something. That, I'm like, what the fuck is that? <laughs> <laughs> She's a real hippie, Lotus Pringles. <laughs> Well, when whenever we did that interview with her, like that was one person that I was positive that we would never get to interview, but she was doing press for this book about pot that she did or something. Mm-hmm. She smoked herself. I won't even say it, but she's yeah. Well, she was she was great though. She was so eager to like talk about the movie and everything as long as we talked about that damn book too. She blew blood smoke. <laughs> I can't even say that. <laughs> In my new board's eyes. What the hell? Uh, now, chips. Come on. Oh, now. God. I don't know if that's true or not, but I would like believe it. Oh, Jesus. <laughs> Got 135 Gotta people. Again. In Gotta the just chat. start early, man. Start them as babies. Start them as yeah. babies. <laughs> be a pot of one of your babies. They'll be baby. chill their whole life, right? Be like, it's good for him. Blow it in his face. Stop crying. <laughs> There's research that says that this is healthy for your newborn. Yeah. yeah. I have the goddamn baby crying. You will go to sleep, sleep or I will put you to sleep. <laughs> so, as long as but, it's an indica, I think it's okay. Yeah. You don't want to get the other strain. Yeah. Did, yeah. did Blumhouse announce that they're just doing one movie or are they doing multiple movies here? I didn't really look that far into it. I'm sure there'll be at least three. Probably, you know, they're going to try to milk it for all it's worth. It's interesting though, because like I was saying, as far as money makers go, it's just that original movie. This is kind of similar to the Texas Chainsaw franchise, aside from, you know, like I said, the remake at least on that one made money. Um, maybe more close to the Exorcist franchise, right? Because the Exorcist, the first Exorcist movie, made a ton of cash. The sequels didn't make shit. Yeah, and speaking of that cash cow stuff, like, is it Blumhouse that's also producing the new Friday the 13th TV series, or no? I can't keep up with it. I don't know. I don't know either. No idea. I think, it's, uh, I think it's Brad Fuller, like the guys who did the remake. I think it's mm, them. Okay. Is that fucking Platinum Dunes? Is yeah. Platinum Dunes still around? I didn't know they were yeah, still around. I haven't heard around. that name in forever. Anyway, real quick, though. Going back to Bear Witch real quick. I had a buddy. This is no shit. We were, when that movie came out, we would have been 18. What year did that movie come out? 99. Yeah, so 18. And he swore up and down. Just give you an idea 
I mean, this is an adult. And he was like, no, he's like, this is fucking real. Like this really happened. Like, you know, there's, it's, you know, you got to watch this and all this stuff on the internet. And, yada, and he thought it was legitimate. And there was a lot of people that really believed that. Like, well, this is Eastern Kentucky, Uncle Bill. So. <laughs> <laughs> we got to look true. at it. No and shit. We get a lot guys. of that in Western Kentucky too. So, so Eastern Kentucky is l- legit, like twenty years behind the times overall. Wouldn't you guys agree? Like, yeah. Well, so I would say some other areas around me are, but yeah, I would agree. Right. That too. 1999. We're living in the future here, buddy. What the fuck are you talking about? <laughs> Honestly, though, though, even in the big city, though, 1999 internet and everything was still pretty much in its infancy everywhere. Right, everything was still like slow dial up internet. They had those, a lot of those shitty Geocities websites. You remember those? Or Tripod or whatever. Everybody was still using Netscape Navigator as their browser. So it was still like, I, I think a lot of moviegoers weren't really in the know when it comes to, you know, all, just the Blair Witch. Like, what was it? You know, the marketing behind it was genius. They had that special on the Sci Fi channel that okay. was. That was a big thing. Yeah, that was I pretty think that's, huge. That really helped sell it, I think. So, I mean, the, the filmmakers and everything are pissed off that they're not making any more money from it, but I think that the marketing department had a lot to do with that movie's success as well. So the artisan and that group, you know, they, they spent like eight or nine million on marketing. I think that had it not had that, it may have very well been, even though it's a much better movie, but it would have been like the last broadcast. Like nobody knows what in the fuck it is. Yeah. You know. Good. <laughs> fuck that movie. <laughs> I, I kind of feel the same. I mean, Didn't you have a, have a run in with yeah. the director as well, Rambo? No, not yet. I'm sure. Oh, okay. <laughs> they commented on, on our, on one of our, reviews back in the day one of the directors did or producer or something oh, wow. we just didn't get it we didn't get what his vision right. was i suppose um i wanted to talk to you though about the demands that they made about this did you see this on here too i'm curious to like it's officially the brady opinion. bunch by the way here we go oh, Anthony. Well, we've got hey. every what's up oh, man yeah brady bunch what's up on, Anthony. <laughs> not much not much. So, your, uh, let's, uh, let's, wait, unless Blumhouse does the remake with Uncle Bill with the shotgun and he's hunting John Leguizamo dressed up as a witch. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, that movie, that that movie would be, would be more it. entertaining than what they're going to put out, I guarantee. But then the witch is just revealed to be John Gonzalez. <laughs> <laughs> That's kind of what the witch looked like in that figure form. It's like <laughs> John Gonzalez. In a way, yeah, I guess. Yeah. The Mary She's Brown good. description in the movie does kind of sound just like you know, she had hair on her hands and hair everywhere. <laughs> you know, it does sound it's like yeah. she may have just saw, you know, 93, you know, Survivor series or something like that. <laughs> She's just trying to get like a coke or something walking through the woods. Uh, so that the Heather, Michael, and Josh released a statement, and this is what they said that they wanted from Lionsgate. Retroactive and future residual payments to Heather, Michael, and Josh for acting services rendered in the original Blair Witch Project, equivalent to the sum that would have been allotted through SAG-AFTRA had we had proper union or legal representation when the film was made. That's the first request. Meaningful consultation on any future Blair Witch reboots, sequels, prequels, toys, games, rides, escape rooms, etc. That's the second request. Escape room. <laughs> and the third one, this is this is the one that got me. The Blair Witch Grant, a $60,000 grant, the budget of our original movie, paid out yearly by Lionsgate to an unknown aspiring genre filmmaker to assist in their first feature film. <laughs> About the Blair Witch Scholarship. <laughs> the Blair Witch Scholarship <laughs> Program. I mean, I did, look, I'm kind of with them. To a point on this, but I feel like why the fuck would anybody need to consult with them on anything <laughs> at this point? They I didn't mean, really, you know, to the film base. The residuals made sense. I get the residuals part. The rest of it is ridiculous. Who did? Why? Why would they care? Hey, I need your opinion. I know you haven't done anything for thirty years, but I need your opinion on this new movie. No one's going to care about that. No, they don't. And a grant. I mean, what is? Hey. 
we don't find people that look like a witch. Hey, you meth head, you look like a witch. Maybe you'd be, you'd be a witch with a grant or something. I don't know. I, I don't understand that either. The residual is fine. The others, it's like some power play thing. I don't know. It's, yeah, that's yeah, that's yeah, I don't get that's it. That's really weird. Like, I might as well be the one making those damn demands. Like, they're not going to give a shit. Like, it's going to go one ear and out the I other. Wanna, but the I residuals, cut like that said, right, witch. Well, yeah, I get it. All right. <laughs> I want to cut of that Blair Witch well, well, puzzle that's coming out. That that boils <laughs> down to the idea of how much do you think that the actors had to do with the success of that movie? And to me, honest to God, and I'm just trying to be honest, Heather Donnie was the only actor that I thought had any real impacts on that movie. So after that, it's like, I mean, what, aside from the dude standing in the corner, what else is memorable about the acting performances in that movie. Uh, so, I mean, it really is like a marketing base driven kind of movie. If you think about it. So more so than any movie I can think of. Well, I mean, I think the performances were fine. Like I said, I think the performances were good, but I mean, if anything, the filmmakers should have, should have these demands or whatever. I don't know what the fuck the actors have to say about anything, which is, it's weird because I was, I attended the the panel of discussion that they had at Horror Hound this year and it didn't seem like they were at all bitter or angry. They were just more, oh yeah, I'm so, it's so crazy to think that anybody cared about this movie and blah, blah. And so to see this list of demands, it was just like, well, that's random. I didn't expect that, but. Maybe I guess the big thing was, panel. Who knows? What was it? She got all those demands for Scream, so she maybe was like, "Hey, make some demands, and then they'll get you in there." Who knows? Well, she's already done what six Scream movies or whatever, though, too. So they like <laughs> immediately did the sequel. What was it? A year later, or less than a year later, um, with nobody's involvement from the first movie at all. They're like, "Fuck it, let's just get something out there. We'll call it Blair Witch." Here we go. We'll get some hot women and put in it. And uh, uh, what well, they had like a rock soundtrack or something as well. They were marketing with it too. Yeah, I feel like uh, yeah. one of Marilyn Manson's songs was in that movie. I can't remember which one, but pretty sure he was one of his songs was in there. Yeah, I remember that. I, I, I think, think the DVD came with the soundtrack, if I'm not mistaken. Hmm. It's one of those deals. But uh, I, it was just a totally different movie. And then. Oddly enough, what was it, like six or seven years ago, they had that just the Blair Witch movie, which I couldn't make it through it. I couldn't watch it all. I just turned the fucking thing off. I was like, no, I'm I'm tapping out on this one, boys. So to me, it's a very, to, to redo or however they're doing it, reboot, revamp, requel whatever uh, it's it's very I mean, I think at this point those those handheld cam movies and stuff have run their court they've done they've done enough of those people are sick of that shit at this point yeah there's there's easily been over a hundred of them i mean it's like anything when there's a new gimmick and there were films before like man bites dog or uh, bits of cannibal holocaust but what's a new thing people jump on? And it's like it's like slasher films. I mean, there was the heyday from 80 to 84. Then we got to the mid to late 80s. They died down a bit. Or all the stream films that were lighted, Valentine, Urban Legend, and then they died down a bit. And for the most part, if you see those films, they go either direct to video or people make them for five bucks on YouTube, post them and stuff. And uh, I mean, I enjoy the original film. But as like I said before, even initially... And I agree with you guys. It was marketing that sold it. Is marketing that made that a big bundle. And right off the bat, you had over 50% hate the movie. If you have over half your audience hate the film, that's not a film that has a love life of a long term like Texas Chainsaw or Nightmare on Elm Street and stuff. Mm -hmm. And even Texas Chainsaw, a lot of the sequels didn't do well. So if that film that has much more of a love life, even those sequels get dimension returns. How do you, do you think a movie that half the audience hated from the get go? I don't know what audience they think they're going to get today. Either they don't know what it is. Oh, I heard that it's, I thought it sucked. Or I you saw that back in the day, I sucked. And then the few people like me who like it, it's like, I'm fine with the first film. 
not everything needs a franchise. It's not a franchisable character. It's not a franchisable backdrop. I mean, well, yeah. In, in order to, in, yeah, there's in order to, else. in order to franchise it, Rambo, you, the only thing you can franchise yeah. about it is the fucking Blair Witch. But that's the thing. They never showed the Blair Witch. Right. That was the best part of the movie. Last movie and it that, looked like dog shit. That's the main takeaway. I'm not even right getting there. into that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not, not going to talk about any of the attempts to actually like show the Blair Witch and what it would look like. Because all I that think the, shit. the main takeaway from that whole thing is not everything needs to be a franchise. Like, I agree with that. I, I just got off a stream with Dana. We were doing an ET watch along, and and you know, and like, well, that's not a horror film. You know, it's still a classic film that's universally loved by a lot of people. Mm -hmm. Um, and you know, it didn't have a sequel to it. They didn't need to. You know, it's just like a lot of these films out there. They don't need sequels. With one of those franchises I brought up, Dana was The Howling. That had no business being a franchise i mean the way that movie ends in the original howling is i mean it's it's perfect in my eyes you know and nothing could can follow that in the rest especially the fucking what was it the marsupials i mean what the what oh you? that one was great <laughs> <Whoa>! <laughs> it was pretty killer in a bad way well that's just hollywood i mean that's just anything blair witch is a name it's a property, and if if they can produce it cheaply and yeah. make some money off of it, that's what they're gonna do. And if you, of course, they are. <laughs> if you know, if first person handheld camera, if you can make that for you know as little money as possible, which you can, that's the whole point of it. That's why it got made in the first place. Then they're just you know, Hollywood's just looking for anything to beat to death at this point. I think just to get somebody to go to the theater any way they can at this point. So, yeah, that's I, we got our feeling for Blair Witch, I think. Or anybody have anything else to add there? Anthony, you got a you, we got a couple of guys that are younger, like Anthony and Matt and Ryan. Uh, you guys are on the younger side of things. Are, are you excited at all about a new, like, revamped Blair Witch? Just, you know, because you didn't really grow up with it as much as, like, we did. Right. Yeah, no, I, I don't really think uh, this excites me at all. I just think it's more of, like, again, just the whole cash grab thing. I think for as far as the actors are concerned, I think maybe they did one too many conventions, and now they're just, like, you know, there's, like, all right, now I want to pay out for whatever is, you know, I, I just don't understand, Bingo. like, <laughs> when these movies are done... Like, that's why I love, like, the old, like, piracy ads. Like, back at the day, like, oh, well, if you steal this movie, the lighting guy doesn't get paid. And this, it's like, all these people got paid years ago. Like, it's done. It's a done project. You know what I mean? Unless you're some of these big producers or directors that are attached to it making money off of it. It's like, I don't really know where this, like, ego trip is coming from where it's like, even if they are chill at conventions, why are they asking for a payout for this you know, revamp that might not even be successful to begin with. They might just flop like the other, like, look at Exorcist. Like, they never really got past, you know, they might not even get past that believer's crap. So it's like, what are we doing here? You know, I feel like they get they get too ahead of themselves, especially Blumhouse. But, yeah, I don't know. I just, it doesn't really excite me. And I do like the first film. I still like it. But you can't really recapture that. So I don't really, uh, I don't know. I, I think it's a, it's a lame excuse for them to bring it back, especially after the 2016 crap. Like, that was really bad. So... Wasn't a fan of that. Did the yeah. 2016 movie? How much did that make in theaters? Does anybody have that information? Uh, like, I'm, I'm curious if it did well enough for. I mean, it, it may be one of those, like The Exorcist. The beginning actually did well in the theater. I think. I right. bet it did better than we think it did. Something tells me. Yeah. Probably. Yeah. Kind of. I kind of feel like I remember that it not doing too bad. I never went to see it, but. But that was one of those movies, though, when it came out, like nobody said anything good about it at all. <laughs> so I avoid it watching made, it for many years. It made twenty million in the U.S., twenty million dollars in the U.S. I don't know what forty-five million worldwide. I mean, so I it did was, did decent, I guess. I guess that's okay. You know, I I'm sure it didn't have that big of a budget by watching it, but who knows. I've been surprised before, so we will have to wait and see with <laughs> the 
and and it's the 25th anniversary of the first movie, so there is a, I guess it's a 4K edition that's coming out this fall of the first movie. I don't know how well that's going to really benefit from 4K, but they'll, I think they're finally doing special yeah, features. There's no interviews. Well, only have the DVD. I never even got the Blu-ray. Of Blair. That's all I got. To. <laughs> Honestly, a friend of mine, uh, a friend of mine wrote literally wrote the book on the Blair Witch Project it's called Eight Days in the Woods, named Matt, Matt Blasey. Um, he actually says the best way to watch it is on VHS. Like that's the best yeah. way to watch Blair Witch Project is on VHS. So 4K, mm -hmm. maybe a little, a little. It's overkill. like um, <laughs> my my old school bootleg tape. I still have it in there. I've kept it because it looks extra shitty. Like it's like a second generation copy. So, mm -hmm. but yeah, I mean, at, at least with the new edition, there'll be some special features on it. Finally, well, maybe we'll see. But it does seem like for a movie that made that much money for the company, they really have never went all out and given it that special treatment on home video. You know, it's just had a basic bitch edition for 25 years. <laughs> they should call it the basic bitch edition. The basic witch edition. The basic yeah. bitch project. <laughs> but open topic, guys. Anything else you guys want to talk about? Throw it our way. We're ready, bulls. Well, uh, has everybody seen? Oh, go ahead, Mark. This is really random, but I was just scrolling through various horror websites, just looking around at different stuff, and I saw that Brad Dourif has officially mm. retired from acting, at, but not for Chucky, though. God damn it! Well, <laughs> <laughs> well, I was thinking, well, fuck. Yeah, he says he's going to continue to do that. Well, what the uh, fuck has he done besides Chucky in the last 10 years anyway? Uh, the last thing that I remember that he did besides Chucky, I think that Deadwood TV movie, which was like yeah, a few years ago for HBO, he was good in that. Um, but before that, I'm not even really sure. It's just very odd to me that like that's what he chose to go out on, or maybe he doesn't care anymore. Um I wish he had gotten a lot more stuff. I mean, I think we all know he deserves it because he's a great actor. But <laughs> hell, man, like you're gonna you're gonna end your career with Chucky. Like, it's just, well, I mean, you, know, you gotta think for him, that gig yeah. is so easy for him. It's all voice acting. There's no physicality yeah. to it. I mean, he can literally just sit a chair, chair the microphone in front of him and collect dough. I mean, and he's 76. Although he is acting in the new season, he's in his. Well, mm, I yeah. saw that trailer. He's in uh, back in his original form. I don't know how they pull that off, but is <laughs> well, nowadays you never know, man. Is that really him or is that the AI shit? <laughs> yeah, I mean they could have yeah. his daughter. I mean, do mm. the stand-in and basically you know alter her face because I mean they do that shit all the time anymore. That's fucking scary thought there. Right? That is, like, she, she did that that is a stretch. Her, yeah. her body with his head on it. Now there, uh, <laughs> I never know that, that Chucky TV series. And there She's is, not all Jargento bulls. <laughs> <laughs> There's some scenes and some flashback scenes of uh, where it's like showing the life of Charles Lee Ray and Fiona Duruff is actually playing that yep. role of Charles yeah. Lee Ray. And she did a really good because she looks a lot like her dad. And she did a really good job in that. I thought, you know, I'm not a huge fan of that show. I've watched it, but there's, I respect it because of the, you know, they brought a lot of the older actors like uh, Alex Vincent came back as Andy for that show. And uh, there's a few others, I believe, as well. He's not good on that show, though. No, no. <laughs> He's really terrible. <laughs> no. Except Some of that show, the show. Chucky looks like Ellen Burstyn now. Is like she's like eighty eight years old. <laughs> yeah, I saw. What's I saw the story with that? I have no idea how that. <laughs> I, yeah. I'm not that far in the show, so I have no idea. I saw I a commercial. from Life Force took him. I watched the first. Until season, it took it. Soul. It's like uh, if Joe Biden was a puppet or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> It's Pretty it's bad. really stupid. I mean, it from what I saw because I don't keep up with it. I just saw that that clip, but something about like the whole voodoo things caught up with him. He didn't pay back souls or some shit to Dumbala. It's it's stupid. I I don't get it. And I think they do like at the White House. 
That's all I know. I'm not like That's the me. biggest Chucky fan anyway, but I think with that show, man, that they've killed that whole fucking series. Like, I don't know how you would go back and make a movie now and get people interested. I think people would be more interested if they were to do a sequel to the remake at this point. Yeah, I thought the, what was the one that came out in 2012 or 2013? I actually thought that one was pretty good. Um, I forget what it was, a curse, not curse. It was, I forget oh, what it was called. Cult. Cult, cult, right? There's so many, there's so many titles. Uh, yeah, whatever one was before cult, I think. is the Where one there, that. it takes place all in the house. All in the house, yeah. Curse. That's curse, yeah. That's curse. Okay, yeah. that one I actually mm. thought was pretty good, but that was like the last time I was actually like, up to date with all the the Chucky stuff, so yeah, it's been it's been quite some time. Yeah, the whole like lore of that show is kind of confusing anyway, because if you look at Bride of Chucky, and you know you got the the character of Tiffany in that, and then the next next film, Seed of Chucky, it's like Tiffany is just the doll, and then Jennifer Tilly is a sep se separate character in Seed of Chucky, and then they kind of carry that on into this TV series now, like. So where where does it is that all connected or what what's I'm it's really confusing at times. It's a it's a big convoluted mess thanks to Don Mancini. I think he's single handedly ruined the whole thing. I mean it's it, you really see how special the first movie is. I mean a lot of that we always have to owe to uh, Tom Holland because that script wasn't what it was when he got it. Like it, I just oh God I, I'm not a fan of Tom Mancini at all. I just think the guy's completely <laughs> inept in every way. <laughs> so he's like John Russo. Like, yeah. uh, I don't know uh, if anybody's yeah. that bad. No, I wouldn't go that far. Uh, <laughs> I agree. Yeah, John, like, oh, he's yeah. not selling like you know. He's trimming his toenails from 1988 and selling them on there. Yeah, he's not using <laughs> pictures of Triple H for the front of his book and stuff. <laughs> so he's he's Triple H. Just see on his Facebook, I guess it was a couple of weeks ago, he was he's everything that he's been trying to sell. He's like, everything on this page is yours for sixteen hundred dollars. I gotta pay my taxes or something like that. I'm like, Jesus Christ, that's sad. It's killing. He's like everything. He's like, you can have it all for sixteen hundred dollars. Uh, my taxes Jesus. are all fucked. Yeah. He had like a canceled check that was signed by Romero. Well, he oh, said yeah, he like he sells all kinds of like canceled checks. I think he had a um, what was the other one that. That he had like a um, uh, from Not Living Dead or something. I can't remember. But it was signed by like it was signed by a couple of the people that had passed away. I think yep. this yeah. is a piece of toilet paper used by Bill Hughes. Two hundred eighty dollars. <laughs> no, what what, what, through, through what the, I think it the was, it was a it was a signature from Dwayne Jones on something, but it wasn't an actual signature. It was like a Xerox copy of it or something <laughs> oh, like man. that. Oh jeez, pretty awesome. on Fucking Rambo, did you have did you have something you was wanting to mention on here? You you held your hand up earlier about child's play. Oh no no no, Chucky. No, I was just gonna shit on Don Man Fettuccini, but still my Mark beat me to it. Don Fettuccini, fucking asshole. Is is it because of the the show or just overall? The guy hasn't done anything worth his shit outside in Chucky. And there's a reason why. Because they see that his writing sucks and they're like, I don't want to hire him. I just think there's a lot more talented people that people give him all the credit. Like you mentioned, Tom Holland and other people, I think, are reasons what made at least the first three movies I like. And mm -hmm. I just think he's an overrated writer. And then the stuff I've seen on the show, I mean, what, the first episode, he Chucky puked someone to death or something? Like he puked and someone electrocuted. Yeah. And he, he's wearing like Hello Kitty Halloween masks, and yeah, I love the <laughs> he's, he's playing people. PlayStation like and all that shit. Yeah, it's it's ridiculous. Which one of the films in the Chucky franchise do you guys feel is the weakest of all of them? That's easy. Oh, geez, Steed. 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 Yeah, yeah, I would yeah. say that's probably yeah. the worst one. Yeah, and I'm not a fan of of anything really after Bride of Chucky seed of chucky and even cult and curse i i don't like those movies i don't like what they did with the whole uh the the dude has chucky's head in it you know like and it's like a ro you know still alive and it's just, you know tormenting or yeah. you know i i don't get it i don't know why they went with that direction with it i'm not a fan of those movies 
I think it should have, a lot of people were saying in the chat, it should have ended after part three. You know, uh, yeah, that, I, that, I, I, that Chucky that existed in the first three movies is very different from the Chucky that they tried to pull off from Bride forward. And uh, I, I just think, I think part three is super underrated. I really like that movie. The longer time goes on, the more I have appreciation. I'll have to go back and one. revisit it because yeah, a lot of people are I, saying I agree that, with though. that, man. I agree with um, that. But I would, but you know, and it, I think that's also true. It should have probably ended after part three. Well, but you know, I will admit to say I, there are parts of Bride of Chucky that I do enjoy. Uh, mm -hmm. I feel like it kind of fits too. But yeah, you know, that that should have been the latest. Just to Bride end of Chucky. Bride of Chucky. Bride of Chucky is my favorite out of all of them. To me, yeah. Bride of Chucky is like Friday Five to me. Like the characters are more. Fun. It's a it's Memorable. a fun midnight yeah. movie, like late nineties. Yeah. yeah. There's not too well, many literally. horror movies from that time period that that you know capture that era, but, and I think the that buck, that one does. The buck should have stopped there. Soundtrack, soundtrack too. Yeah, yeah, I mean, yeah just killer soundtrack. You. It, it just should have stopped there because that could have been their perfect send off of it. Okay, you know we did the first three. The third one ha was a little bit more goofy with his dialogue than the first two. Mm -hmm. And then they could have said, okay, let's just really go off the walls with this character and make Bride of Chucky. And, never ends, you know, it though, and it'll never end that i mean just because it's a it's a franchise like that it'll never end they'll do that, this damn movie they'll do this tv show and there'll be another like independent little movie or something that'll come out and they just it'll go on and on and on until they just like scream make you sick to fucking death everything needs a tv show now too everything needs a yeah a series yeah. like you, know, you got this yeah, crystal lake series off, coming out it's like you don't need not, that but uh, here not we are. everything needs to have a series not everything needs to be franchised and I God, I hope that dies off someday. Well, there's so many of these shows that came out that I didn't even realize there was an Exorcist show. There was an Omen show. Mm -hmm. You know, they it's they last good. like half of the season or something, and they're they're done. <laughs> even Scream um, had that show. Yeah, yeah, the MTV show that ran for two seasons, three seasons, something like that. And you know, that's. Right. It's kind of similar to you, know, you talk about how the, the dialogue in the ch child's play the Chucky films got goofier and goofier as it went on. You know, the uh, parallel to that is the Nightmare films. You know, as they went on, the, the dialogue got goofier and goofier, even though, you know, you know, it's just like that's what a lot of people came to know as, you know, if they got into that series later on, instead of starting from the very beginning, they knew as Freddy as being this like comic book style like goofy you know horror character and i'm shocked that that freddy never got a series either you know i'm glad he didn't not yet but i'm <laughs> yeah, surprised too soon freddy's nightmares back in the day man well, yeah you know <laughs> he was in a couple of episodes. Thing, but, <laughs> less saying about that that's thing. a show that has not aged well oh, so i don't know if you guys have tried to go back and rewatch it but uh yeah yeah, it's it's really bad. I, I think even at the time they knew that like <laughs> it was bad, but they were just having fun with it. They talk about that a little bit on the um the Never Sleep Again documentary. Oh yeah. They were pimping yeah. it out, you know. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Well, so um who's next? I was just gonna ask if everybody here has seen uh Late Night with the Devil yet. I watched yeah, it last yeah. night. Not yet. Not. It's on Shutter now, so yeah, I'm, I'm sure I'll check it out here sooner or later. I yeah. thought it was okay. I thought it was pretty good. I'd give it like a solid seven out of a ten. Uh, easy watch. Kept my attention all the way through. I've heard people complain about the ending, but I, I it was it was fine. It was okay. It wasn't the greatest ending in the world, but I think as a whole, I mean, I thought it worked pretty well. I just wanted to see what all you guys thought. If you, for those of you who have seen it, I guess. Yeah, like um, I need to go back and watch it. I've not I, seen it. It wasn't a, you know, I, I think there was a lot of people like really praising it. So I was trying to go in with just like you know, just to see how they were going to tell the, this tale and kind of like because I knew it was all right. There, you know, it's going to be through this perspective of watching this late night show. And the one thing that I wish that they didn't do is cut to. I know they had to explain some stuff, but the fact that they were cutting to like behind the scenes like conversations and stuff i thought it would have been really more effective if it was just like this is the broadcast and this is how 
you're watching this like kind of found footage in a way but like it was really weird how they set it up because at the beginning they explained everything they told you about this character competing with these late night shows trying to get these ratings and then like if i feel like maybe more than halfway through it just kind of lost its like footing a little bit with the storytelling and it kind of just did is at least how i felt um it wasn't bad it did hold my interest i thought like the way that they made everything look like it was from the 70s and the cinematography was awesome and on point but um I did enjoy it though. I, I would probably sit at like a six or a seven. I would say it, it just, I just felt like towards the end, I was just kind of like, okay, what, what the hell just happened without giving away too much. I don't want to completely spoil it for everybody. Cause it just came out on streaming, but yeah, I, I just, I thought it, it did hit some marks and then some of the other stuff where I was like, okay, it's, it's kind of a little predictable in that sense, but I, I did enjoy it. It was a little of a, you know, just a little bit of a confusing way they ended it in my opinion, but so, so my question is, is it better than Skinamarink? Oh, God. Way better than Skinamarink. Yeah, <laughs> yeah definitely. Yeah, I, I wouldn't yeah, even I put it so. in the same sentence, to be honest with you. Oh, yeah, because like, it's 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 at least there's there's filmmaking here, at least, um, mm -hmm. and and some kind of vision, whether or not that vision was, you know, seen all the way through to the end. But I think this was, you know, it was entertaining. And you're just kind of like, OK, this stuff's just going to get like, you know, like what they try to do on this late night show, you're just like, okay, this is not going to end well. And yeah, stuff doesn't end very well. So Bobby Reynolds, $5 super chat for Rambo on saw 3d, the final chapter on the cover. Does that guy look like a giant Sylvester Stallone <laughs> being built or something? <laughs> I love that question. It's supposed to be, great it's so it's supposed to be killed him down, but consider the films he's done lately. Surprised he didn't do a saw film. He's done some really bad stuff lately. But that was supposed to be Tom and Bell. But you know, they're the same. Tom and Bell's the best clone. They look Give McCall. Exactly the uh, Stallone will do it. <laughs> <laughs> sure. Uh, Is that uh, lately, Sally? Yes. Hey, yo. Hey, yo, Jitsa. <laughs> what are you doing there? <laughs> you have to track man. My leg, my leg. Mickey, get my leg. Rambo, if Sylvester Stallone keeps acting and he somehow loses his voice, I think you should dub him. <laughs> <laughs> nah, do you have the guy who does Steam Seagull movies? Get that dub. I sound like a southern black guy. <laughs> <laughs> it's like his uh, reggae album or whatever he did. <laughs> you guys oh, yeah, know about his that? Album where his yeah. songs, like, there's a song called Talk to My Ass. There's this is real song Steven's a girl saying called Talk to My wow. Ass. Yeah. Alligator Ass, that's another song. He's got like a, a the reggae like or Jamaican accent on the song. Yeah. Too. It's wow. so funny. That's I saw, that, him, I mean, I saw wow. him trying to play a blues song and he's like holding a guitar and he never plays it, but he's like <laughs> he's holding, like singing. Holding. And you know the part where you when you sing a blues song, you're supposed to sing like a line and then play something on the guitar. So he sings the line, then he acts like he's gonna do something, and just goes back to say. It. He's, he's like he forgot. His hands. He's like, "Where am I at here?" It's he never learned basic chords. He never got that far. No, he, there's no way he knows anything on the guitar. He's just kind of like. Be like that time Fred down. Durst was like trying to. You remember that back in the day, yeah, Fred Durst? Never seen that. <laughs> oh man. Um, one quick thing that I had, and I saw this, and I was like. Oh God. Cause I was looking forward to this movie and a steal came out from it. So we've been talking about me and uncle Bill on a variety of shows, the Robert Eggers Nostrato movie that's mm -hmm. coming out in December mm -hmm. and Bill Skarsgård. I think it's the right Skarsgård that's playing yeah, Nostrato in Skarsgård. this, right? <laughs> so I want to flash this picture up here. And he's channeling Stardust, man. And I cannot not see <laughs> Stardust in this photo <laughs> here. It's man. Billy Corgan from that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Kind of is a vampire. Da, 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 da. Or William Sadler from Bill and Ted. <laughs> and I'm like, <laughs> what in the Damn hell right. is going on here, Bulls? That's my oh, first time seeing here. this. That's that's why. Wow. Jesus. <laughs> He's gonna play Twister here with animated with Bill and Ted. So yeah, suddenly I'm not really looking as much forward to this movie yeah, as I was. That's, that's a bit disappointing. Why are they trying I... to bring back all of these like vampire things? Like they're they're trying to all, like 
I just feel like it's not working for them. They try to do that vampire on a on a ship thing, right? And that that didn't work. Was it Dracula Last on the ship? Of yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's yeah. like they try to do that, and like it didn't. You know, like some people were putting it over, but I was like, dude, like every time they try to do this, it just does not work. They did it with that, um, you know, that was it that horrible I Frankenstein crap. If oh, like Dracula that was, Untold, yeah, yeah Dracula mm, Untold. Yeah. That, that was horrible. Like, why do they keep trying to bring these back? I like, was, I was shocked that they that they made that film too, because like that whole film, The Last Voyage of Demeter or whatever it's called, it's like that in the book, Bram Stoker's Dracula's book, it it's just like a few paragraphs or, or like a page or something like they that. Extended it. It. Yeah. It's like, really? Do we need that into like a, a whole film? I don't know. Like one well, the thing I, is, it's exactly what you think it is too. Like when you read about it and shit and I got 20 minutes into it, and I was like, this shit, this ain't for me. This is, right. this is a movie. That's not for <laughs> me. I'm turning it off. Cause it's like two and a half hours long or something like that. Yeah. <sighs> It's a period well, piece, of course. They're all yeah. talking extra British. You know, as they do <laughs> in these movies, Sarah and his Tom Frame. <laughs> right? Uh, so. so he's going off the 1922 Nosferatu for this. Mm-hmm. Right? So yeah. why does the why does that looks like Skarsgård not, guy look not like not Billy Gordon? Yeah, I mean, because yeah. he's no Klaus Kinski else. Maybe they could call him Scars Dust. <laughs> real quick put that picture back up just one <laughs> i'm sorry i just wanted to see it one more time wow it really does that is, that is yeah. that's the war era billy corgan dude that's uh, the general manager at hot topic yeah. <laughs> there you go getting the getting the nose rings out oh, for you shit. yeah oh, god <laughs> That's like state you if he was in a vampire movie. Yeah. I hope that's not real. That's real. Nah, that that's not real. real. It's legit. That's 100% what they think we want to see. <laughs> Did anybody... Um, I was in the theater recently uh, and watching Civil War, and uh, they played a trailer. I think it was maybe an extended trailer for this movie, Long Legs. I did see that trailer. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that is probably one of the better trailers for a newer horror movie that I've seen in a while. I mean, it was very effective. You know, no dialogue or anything like that. Just a couple quick shots from the film. Doesn't give you a real strong idea of what exactly is going on. Really creepy music. And just the editing of the trailer and everything made it uh, look really intriguing for me. So I didn't know if anybody else had seen that trailer. And if you haven't, I definitely suggest you go watch it. Um, It's not the one. It's on YouTube, but I think there's also one or two other trailers that exist out there. But this this one didn't have. um, It didn't have Nick Cage in the trailer that I saw. Neither did mine. I I saw it with um, when I saw Immaculate. They had a bunch because that was a neon I guess film and they had a bunch of neon trailers bef- like before that and long legs was among that and they didn't show yeah I didn't see Nicolas Cage I didn't see anything I just I saw some of the posters some of the stills that were just on social media and like it's very again very minimal you just didn't know what what's going on you just know it takes place in the 70s and it just looks like a like a mind fuck type film at least that's what I got from the trailer I was like what is going on I don't even know what this is but mm-hmm. it, it you know it does look intriguing for sure I mean I, I definitely want to mm-hmm at least check it out especially you know trying to see you know what is more yeah. you know I, I i don't like to see a lot of trailers before i go see something sometimes i'm forced to because if i'm at the theater you just see trailers but that's all i would like to see from that film before going into it like what i saw yeah. was like okay i don't want to just ruin this for me because every other trailer has to show you everything and that's just such mm-hmm. a bummer you know that that is trailer it? is a great example of that. It was like, okay, what is this? What could this even possibly be about? It looks very dark and like evil, I guess would be mm-hmm. the way to put it. And, yeah. uh, you know, maybe even violent. And uh, yeah, it's, it's that's how most trailers should be, especially for horror films. So very effective, I thought. Yeah, like I remember seeing that trailer months ago. So I'm surprised like they're still showing it. You guys know the release date on the movie? Uh, July 12th, apparently. Okay. okay. Yeah, I mean, I Is when I back when I saw it, uh, it was Mika Moreau as the lead, 
Oh, and, uh, Ooh, long and, leg, baby. She's got a nice long <laughs> leg. Make yeah. them all roll. <laughs> That's getting my butt in the seat, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> Take it to the Isn't uh, Anthony Perkins' like son directing that movie? Oh, uh, yeah, it's are. Oz Perkins. Is that his yeah. Name? yeah, yeah, you're right about that. Yep. Yeah, yeah I've read a page. little bit online, like like a loose like plot synopsis, but from what I read, it it sounds like a either like a really good like mind fuck of like a crime thriller. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I just know Cage is playing a serial killer. Um, mm-hmm. Oh but... shit! I thought it was about a giant daddy long legs. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. I was really I don't mind. Mind. <laughs> daddy long legs. Daddy long legs. It's attacking people. <laughs> it looks like it has some kind of satanic, you know, connotations mm-hmm. with it as well. Yeah, yeah. an occult vibe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Definitely check out the trailer. Anybody that has watched it. Now. I've not seen that trailer, but you said it was like based in the seventies. Is that correct? Yeah, seventy four apparently. So I've noticed that that's been a trend in a lot of horror films over the past several years. Is like they're dating a lot of these events back into the seventies. Why? Why do you guys think that is? That's a good question. Seventies mm-hmm. and eighties. People mm-hmm. didn't have cell phones sim- back then, so it's simpler to times. Put them in bad situations. Yeah. To appeal yeah, to nostalgia, true. probably to get money. Uh, well, who are they I'll appealing to it. now? Fucking sixty and seventy year olds. Uh, like, so, well, 70, I mean, for fifty the, for years. The 80s, ago. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, even they're... even even people that like are like us that weren't even around in the seventies still watch seventies movies, right? Yeah. Oh yeah. Well, there's... Yeah. And so I think they're appealing to that group of people that are like caught up in that era. Of well, not only that, there's a, there's an influx of hipsters that were like born in 2002 that are huge into like r- retro stuff. That's very true. Seventies yeah. and eighties. Yeah. They're appealing to every person that buys every goddamn video, video release. <laughs> it was like, flat <laughs> hey buddy, yeah. look, <laughs> look, I buy a lot Pretty of vinegar much. syndrome and they're a great company. Rambo. Vinegar syndrome and measles parakeet well, productions. <laughs> Wonderful <laughs> film. Hey, did y'all put, buy your uh, 420 grinders from them? If you didn't, you know. do they have that? Wow. Hey, really? They, 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 they have rolling out. papers too. Wow. <laughs> if you guys think about it, you know, the, the film back in, I guess it's from the like mid 90s, Days of Confused was kind of a huge catalyst for bringing that culture from like the 70s and stuff back into like the, the modern era. And well, I, I think too. Crater, like in the what would it have been the seventies into the eighties, the fifties was a big thing to go back to yeah, like Greece yeah. and all that shit. And then like you just fast forward that you know to now, and it's like they just go back and it's all the same, same kind of <laughs> stuff. Well, yeah. the, a lot of those movies too, though, it kind of makes them timeless. So if they made yeah. like a movie like Stand by Me was technically made in the mid eighties, but it's set in the late fifties. So it's not really aged because it was supposed to be, you know, that time period anyway. Yeah, a lot of those movies did a like Dazed and Confused, Stand by Me. A lot of those movies when I was younger, like when I first saw those movies, I thought they were from that time period. Like I thought Dazed and Confused was from the seventies when I was a uh, kid. Kind of same mindset. Yeah. yeah so, I, but also I just don't feel like they do a very good job of that now. I feel like they said it in the seventies, but you, they still incorporate like bad cgi and stuff like that into it and it just immediately takes me out of it and i'm just yeah. like oh okay this is obviously that was not- the one thing about late night with the devil where like some of the stuff where i was like yeah they, exactly. they were using cg and it w- it just didn't look very good at some parts and i was like mm-hmm. that kind of took me out of it when this is supposed to be this like you know late night show you're and you're seeing this stuff unfold and some of it was practical and then some of it just looked bad so that took me out of it, I think, when we're talking about something from, that's supposed to be like in this period of time, and then it kind of takes you out of it. So that's I just agree. kind of my thoughts on that as well, like going back to that, you know? Yeah, I think if you're going to make a 70s or 80s movie, you got to stick with like practical stuff, right? Like, because the minute you throw CG into it, you're just like, well, this is not like if you're trying to get into that world, you can't have CG and shit. Right. That doesn't mm-hmm. yeah. make any sense. It's like Paper Moon. I don't know if you guys have ever seen Paper Moon, uh, Peter Bogdanovich. First time I saw that, and I was like older. I thought that movie was from the 40s or 50s, but it was like from the early 70s. But it looked like you know the time period that it was supposed to be. And another film like that is Chinatown with uh, Jack Nicholson. Mm-hmm. Oh yeah, I love Chinatown. Yeah, that's a great example. We have 177 people checking us out live right now, so everybody is a good opportunity. Yeah, I went ahead. Thumbs up. 
thumbs it up and star it and heart it and whatever you do. No, don't, don't do that. No, no. I don't want you to. Because we're, we're still cruising <laughs> on to 10,000 subscribers and God damn it, we deserve at least that many. Yeah, what are you guys doing wrong? How are you guys not have ten thousand subscribers yet? You not pissing some people off or what? Well, we just it, we're not positive enough. I don't think. I think I need people to get more just dumb. Um, I think. Yeah. <laughs> I, don't I don't put any of the blame on us. I think people are just stupid. I agree. I agree. I'll say this: it seems like the people that do subscribe and follow us and everything they're pretty hardcore, so they kind of stick around and shit. You have so quality subscribers. That. Yeah. yeah. But, um, Uncle Bill, you got anything? You've been awful quiet with uh, topics and shit. What do you got? Yeah, I actually, I was watching like a couple of movies the last couple of days from De Palma. And one of them was Dress to Kill and the other one was Blowout. And I was just curious, like, because he's one of my favorite, like, I don't know what you call this, but like adjacent horror directors. Like, he doesn't really make horror films, but his mm-hmm. stuff, like, could right fall into that so like I was it has curious. like a reality type horror to it right i'm curious like who everybody's favorite like directors filmmakers like that are like they're not really horror but like they go into that somewhat hmm, hmm. That's a good question he'd definitely be on my list though yeah uh, he's up there yeah the palmas that stuff blow out um even body double i love body double oh yeah, yeah i just watched that again recently so good like yeah i just really great movie um i think there's a 4k that's actually work being worked on um Ooh. which that'll be a day one grab that yeah oh yeah is that kino or i i don't know yet i there was which there title was, was it body double i think it's kino oh, yeah yeah, Seeming right. like they've never done a horror film at all, or they're just not well, known as a horror director. Yeah, just people that I don't want to necessarily say they've never done a horror. See, because freaking for me, he did like two horror films, but yeah. he also did like 10 other films that had absolutely okay. nothing to do with horror. So it's like, but th- there are times when like a guy like De Palma, like in, especially in those two movies, Blowout and Dress to Kill, like you could easily like say those were like merged into horror films, but they're really not. They're really like drama, thriller, like yeah, something to that effect. Hmm. I what guess about, what maybe about like Fincher, David yeah. Fincher, maybe. Fincher's a great Fincher, yeah. yeah. Or Rennie, Man, somebody Rennie Harlan the... too. I like a lot of the action movies Rennie Harlan did, um, and then he's got a few horror movies. I guess you can consider Mine Hunters one, of course Nightmare, and um, yeah, that's that's yeah. a good question. I have to. I, I had to look up Brian De Palma's uh, filmography, and there's something that I forgot he actually worked on, like Sisters. Yeah. Oh um, hell yeah. yeah! That's an old old one, yeah. Yeah, that's that's a great, a great movie. movie too. So good. He basically has a span of about six films that are all classics. Like yeah, the Carrie. time period there. Yeah, he mm-hmm. he does like Sisters, Carrie, um, Blowout, Dressed to Kill, Scarface, Body Double. Yep. <laughs> yeah, the like all in a row too. I didn't know he did mm-hmm. I mean, the obvious one is. Alfred Hitchcock as well. I mean, that's t- pretty yeah. much just, oh, yeah. you know. What about um, Tarantino? Do you consider him like he kind of goes in and out of every yeah, type of genre? He's, never, he's, never, yeah. he's like a genre director. I, I guess Death say. Proof. Yeah, I mean, I mean, Death Proof is yeah. the closest he came to yeah. like, getting. When there was a lot of splatter in Kill Bill as well, though, too. Oh, yeah. Like he used yeah, like, these another, music but, from the psychic in that movie, too. So, <laughs> like, yeah. it, he does use a lot of Didn't color. he say he his next movie was a horror movie? Or am I thinking? Well, his well, next movie was supposed to be that uh, the, the, the film critic. Or well, film critic, yeah. He, he nixed it, is what I read mm-hmm. recently. That's what I've seen, too, yeah. So I think they, he wants to do Kill Bill 3. Kill, well, I Bill's that. dead, dude. I don't no. want to see Kill Bill 3. <laughs> I, Bill's think, dead. I, I don't Let think I want to. He killed himself <laughs> in a very odd way. Well, well, yes. well the kids are old yeah. enough now that they can fight each other. Yeah. Theoretically, I, I, could he have just stood there like <laughs> for like <laughs> as long as he could well, actually, until there'd be no honor in that though, Uncle Bill. Uh, that's true. <laughs> I don't even just really like the Bill days. movies that much, to be honest with you. What? Like I, I think they're fine, but I, I think part of it is I'm not really a fan of like the martial arts kind of 
films and it i know it's like kind of draws heavily from that with a lot of it and i thought those sequences were, were cool and all like with the the fight scenes and all that and the gore obviously great but those movies didn't really hit the spot for me personally the kill bill well part two always played more like a western or something it was a completely different yeah. type of film than the first one to me i like that one more than the first what one. i think is weird though is that that whole bloody affair i think that there was one dvd edition of that that came out in japan or something and it never fucking, mm-hmm. like it's never been out since like they've never done like a they've done blu-ray editions or whatever but it's always the theatrical version of, of those movies i wonder what the deal is with that it's very weird we're, we're talking like what 25 or no what year was that 2000 hell I, I mean i would i would love to see um tarantino do do some some kind of like de palma ish you know thriller style mm-hmm. film um i think it would you know because he is so into those types of movies i mean you listen to his podcast and stuff and they you know did a full you know hour plus long episodes on like giallo and and those mm-hmm. types of movies he talks about de palma all the time you know i just mm-hmm. i feel like maybe he maybe doesn't want to do something like that because he wouldn't be the type that would want to seem like maybe he's ripping that type of director off in any way but i, I don't know i feel like that would be something i would want to see because he, tarantino for me never really got like you said death proof was the closest he ever got to like a, that's still one of my favorites man like of his like i i still love that movie and yeah. you know i know like nowadays like but back in the day it kind of got lost in the shuffle with just grindhouse not performing well but i think with that that yeah that being kind of the closest thing i still enjoyed every frame mm-hmm. of that movie um and i still think once upon a time is one of his best still mm-hmm. i mean it might be a hot take but i think it's one of his best so whatever he does I next hopefully will be like you know just I guess if it is going to be his, you know, last film, because, you know, they all kind of say that, but, you know, we'll see what happens. Hopefully it's, it's something that is, you know, like that kind of pushes more on that nerve of a horror or thriller, like you were saying. Yeah, I agree, though. Well, Once upon a time in Hollywood is going to be yeah. hard to top. I, the more I've seen that movie twice now and the more I think about it, the more time goes by. That's I. I just like that movie more and more. The more it's I think a about movie, it. it's 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 one of those few movies I can think of a handful of them where the more times you watch it, the better it gets. Like yeah, you, you just have to watch it at least twice. Like if you didn't yeah. like it the first There's time, a lot in it too. Watch like, it at least one other time. Whatever. Yeah, it does not feel like a almost three hour film. Like it just flies because it's just you know it's just so entertaining. And uh, I always find myself getting back into like you know reading about like Manson and the family and everything. Like every time I watch that film, it just kind of takes me back to that, that era. And, um, you know, the, the stuff is very uh, crazy to read up on, you know, all the, the stories and the history and stuff. So yeah, just very, very cool. And there's, there's, do that. there's parts of that, that almost feel feel like a horror film. Like when Brad Pitt goes to the ranch for the first time, that, that whole mm-hmm. anticipation and the buildup and you think something terrible is about to happen. But, you know, you know, as it goes on, we realize that Tarantino is really just kind of saying that this group of hippies are just a bunch of idiots on acid. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, it's nothing really to be afraid of. Right. Well, yeah. that and the, the scene where they're walking up to the house where it's yeah. like it's pitch black and they're just walking up, like taking mm-hmm. their time. Yeah. And you, you know what's coming. And he he, he milks Completely it perfectly. like, yeah, yeah. It turns it on. Mm-hmm. Head when he, yeah. Yeah. I know back in, like, I think it was the late 90s or early 2000s, I had read somewhere recently that Tarantino actually was trying to get the rights for the psychic. He was going to make, like, I guess, like, his own version of it or something. I mean. He loves that movie. I do know that. Yeah. So Well, you would think I mean, it wouldn't be impossible to get something like that. I mean, come on. Yeah. It's not, it's not that well known of a movie, to be honest with you. <laughs> what a fucking perfect comment. <laughs> <laughs> the Ninja Turtles shit. <laughs> yep. His favorite, his favorite faction. No the doubt. Foot Clan. <laughs> Anybody else got anything you wanted to mention on here? We still got plenty of time. Yeah, I, I got a question for everybody since it's sure. this is pretty relevant right now as far as like reboots and remakes and stuff coming out. Uh, and I know we 
a lot of us, you know, not all of us, but we a lot of us do shit on remakes and stuff because you know a lot of them are not very good. But is there any uh, movies out there that have not had a remake that you would actually like to see a remake of? Mm. Yep. The Monster no. Squad. Let's remake it right now. With <laughs> however Disney would make that movie today, let's do it. So let's get the checklist. Hold on, let's get the checklist. Get the checklist. You got to have a yeah. diverse cast. First and foremost, <laughs> Scar's guard first is Dracula. Foremost. Scar's, Scar's got to be in there. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard to think of that. I mean, usually I'll think of it after the fact. But one film I saw wasn't big on, but if done right, if done well, uh, Neon Maniacs. Mm. I think if you did it in the hands of like. The guy who did Hobo with a shotgun or someone like that. <laughs> if you did Neon Manias and do it practical, maybe that could be like a because I'm I, I think the original it like it kind of just ends and like did they all die? Like <laughs> are they still around? It's like does it have an ending? But like that's one that I don't think is really a classic, but I think there's some interesting designs of the creatures. Like one's got a samurai sword and it's like all these weird factions. I'm like why do they die only because of water? <laughs> it's kind of weird. Like, it's, but that, uh, I think there's more you to play with with that. That's interesting that you say that one, Rambo, because it kind of reminds me, you know, of like trauma films. Like a lot of those trauma films wouldn't really hurt to have a remake. Uh, if you, you know, if you're looking at someone like Surf Nazis Must Die. You know, I, <laughs> I wish they'd do that today. I, I, I mean, I mean, you never know. You know, <laughs> they'd have to call them like surf German Avengers. Americans must die now. <laughs> They're really good touch at Avengers, so if that's German. successful, they could surf and German. Do more yeah, that's coming out soon, isn't it? The Toxic Avenger remake. It, yeah. yeah. I think it's done, oh, right? God, I forgot that existed. It seems like it's been coming out successful. for like years. Yeah. I heard that remaking was the street trash too. I mean, I agree. Yeah, street though, trash. With what Crater's saying, in, in theory, like because like a lot of those movies just look nowadays just look awful. I mean, uh, they don't yeah, have any, they didn't have any budget. They didn't have any, and they some of them had really good ideas. And some of the Full Moon movies are the same way. They had good ideas, like they just didn't look. They look like shit. Yeah, and well, they could benefit the, from it. But the a lot of those like um these a big thing in horror now they probably feel like mainstream horror is like the haunted house type stuff. Uh, I know a lot of people's into that stuff, and that, those seem to make a lot of money at the theaters and stuff, and depending on what they are. But, like, I feel like they could take Rabid Grannies and turn it into, like, a Haunted House film remake. <laughs> <laughs> Some of these I'm not sure about, Grady, but maybe, yeah. Rabid <laughs> Grannies. Might be the last. The, the, last. Uh, the Psychic <laughs> actually is a pretty good one. That yeah, I think it was Ryan that mentioned it. Like, because that's a pretty awesome movie, but the pacing of it is not, I mean, I love the movie. I do. And I love the score yeah. and everything. And to me, it's one of the more underrated Fulci movies, but you know, if Tarantino was to remake that movie, it would be legend. It would be a legendary movie. I think. Yeah. You gotta think about the only things that ever get remade are things with a name that they can market. And make a dollar. Off. See, That's I would, I would true. call yeah. it would not be called the psychic. Seven notes in black. Yeah, is the is the name that they should have went with with that movie anyway. So but imagine this. For, imagine they put out a movie and it's called Seven Notes in Black. Now, right? Who the fuck's gonna go see it? Like, it's if it's a Quentin not, Tarantino movie, Tarantino. man. Well, if they get Tarantino, but I mean, that's they go. You go see him, like you know, farting to a tuba or something. Like, no, <laughs> you don't need any kind of. But I'm just saying, like. If you just took put a movie out nowadays, it had a really interesting title, had a really cool premise, and had like, like you know, seven notes in black. Nobody would go see it. Nobody gives a fuck anymore. It's like the most. I think it depends on how you would market thing. it, though. Yeah, it has to have a big name behind it because if not, ain't nobody going to the fucking theater. Like it has to, well, yeah, it's it's too. Well, we'll make money. Yeah, I thought I thought it was just like just pie in the sky. What films you'd like to see remade? I mean, for marketing, that's a whole different. <laughs> Because oh, yeah. I'm not saying it's make money because none of them will make money unless they, you know, like you're <laughs> saying, unless it's a Marvel or Disney or you know, some variation of that. 
It's funny you bring yeah, there was up a that. Sci-fi that not... film. Oh, go ahead. There was a sci-fi film back in the day called Arena, which was like Rocky in space, which was kind of a cool idea, but Charles Band had like eight bucks to work with. So <laughs> if you had like a good action star, like a Scott Atkins, and you, I, I think for a fun B movie that could work, sort of like blood sport in space, I would see that. Yeah, that was. How Van Damme uh... is that doing anything? He's off the coke. <laughs> Get him cleaned up more, and you know, blood no, sport in space. It's... Is he off the coke? Nobody knows. But I was, I was going to say, like, it's interesting so. to see that the two films that Bill Skarsgård's got coming out are both remakes. So, which one do you think is going to be the worst film, The Crow or Nosferatu? Crow. The Crow. The Crow. The Crow. Oh, yeah. <laughs> At least Nosferatu has Robert Eggers to possibly steer it in the right direction. Other and William yeah. Defoe's in it. I mean, I like Defoe myself, yeah. so. Yeah, I'll say this. It's not ex- it's not a uh, I wouldn't say I would want to remake the movie itself, but I would like to see the concept of this movie attached to something else. And it's one that Uncle Bill is talking about with uh, with Dana the other night on on her channel. And that's uh, New Nightmare. Like, oh, yeah. I love that concept. I just mm. think it didn't quite work as well in that movie, in my opinion. I think a perfect I think a perfect uh, like film franchise for for a concept like that would be a, would be a scream movie. If you're if they're going to make another scream film, they should use the new nightmare concept. I think it only makes sense at this point because what else are they going to fucking do with that that franchise? At the this same thing movie? they've always done. That's, yeah, but that's all God. they need money. <laughs> so why Go to space? <laughs> Who uh, outside of going to space? Yeah, what else can you do? <laughs> We need Vin Diesel and it's about family. <laughs> Do you guys family. think that like New Nightmare is very similar to Scream? And it was two years before Scream came out. Was Kevin Williamson, was he in the movie theater watching New Nightmare? It was like, hmm. I mean, hmm. it's very possible. I mean, plus, you know, Wes Craven's associated with both. So, yeah, so I was. Phone calls coming sense. in. I think when we watched it the last time, like I think we did a commentary over it a couple of years ago or something, it reminded me so much of Scream. And this was a couple of years, you know, pre Scream. So it's very interesting um, that, you know, just a couple of years later, they would make something very, very similar with, with Scream, same director and everything. Yeah, even Wes like mentioned something like that. I think on one of the commentaries, and even like the the phone sound of like the ringing is the same. That same exact ring. It's the same thing that they'd use. You're like, all right, that's little little seeds that were planted, I guess, for something else. You know, that I still like New Nightmare. I, I think you know it works well with like I think I guess where else that could they have really taken Nightmare on Elm Street? And he was trying something different, you know. And I, I know it didn't really go over as well. I think maybe some people like it more now than they did back then if they didn't know what the hell it was because apparently people just didn't know what the hell because the trailer didn't really explain much so people saw it and they're like what the fuck is this um but i really like do nightmare yeah I, well I, think I, about I, it if you if you if you do that concept with scream you could this is your opportunity to bring back all the old cast members on the fucking convention circuit now and that's there you go there everybody's gonna go fucking see it just to see skeet ulrich and matthew lillard again and and one of them may be the killer because, you know, the movie has taken over their careers or whatever. I don't know. But I think it, but I, the, I think reason, it just makes sense. the reason they probably would not do that, though, is that a lot of those people, they don't want a bigger payday and they don't want to expect a lot more of a paycheck. Even like the way the we we're talking, you guys talked about earlier, the Blair Witch people, they want more residuals or whatever. This could be like, well, I'm a bigger star now. And. I won't pay more. No, they're paid more. No, I won't pay more. It could be a whole fight of it's who true. gets the bigger paycheck. Yeah, I guess. But what the hell else is Skeet Ulrich and Matthew Lillard doing these days? <laughs> no, no, like, that, conventions. I, conventions I, I, and I, it's it's crazy because Wing Commander too. Like seeing them at the uh, <laughs> the Oak Show, at the last show that I saw all them at with like all the screen cast and everything. The lines just get bigger and bigger. Mm-hmm every time it's it, for them to the point where they're like you know their prices can even go up even further than what it is now like they easily can just make a lot more money and i know it's you know weird to say but that's how they're going to look at it 
and it, it's yeah. crazy to see that it like just the constant lines of just because you think oh man they do a thousand how many conventions does matthew lillard do how many conventions is robert england and every single time it's just more yeah. and more people what's and i'm like they've been here a million yeah. times like what the hell but what's crazy yeah. though is and i don't i don't know how it works now with conventions but before you know they had like an appearance fee Today, I think it would work better if they just said, hey, fly me in and fuck it, bulls. $80 an autograph. If they sign a 1,000 autographs that weekend, which is entirely possible for some of these people, that's $80,000, man. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and it's it's pretty much the same way, I think, nowadays, Wes, is uh, the, the, the parents' fee and everything, but there, there's probably other stuff tacked up on, on that. But I did have, you know, a friend of mine, which he is a one of the popular convention promoters, that he let me know what John Carpenter's asking price for a convention is now, and he said it was a hundred k. I don't. Yeah. To be fair, though, I don't think he ever wanted to do conventions anyway. So he's probably like, if anybody's dumb enough uh, to pay me a hundred thousand, yeah. like. Yeah. He's like, leave me alone. Let me play video it. games, guys. Most of them I'll will show hit, up stoned and yeah, like most of them hit their guarantee just off of name alone because they know that it's they're they just know that they're going to be the headliner. So it's just the yeah. same. It's the same turnout every time, if not more. Or people that are like, oh well, I got you know ten more items in the mail, even though I got all these other stuff. I'm going to bring them all. Like I just I see people just whip out the wad of cash. They're ready to go every single time. They well, it was back. like the uh, crazy. I don't do conventions at all hardly anymore. We did that horror hound show last month and uncle Bill and I was in the line for Eli Roth, hundred bucks a pop for the photo op. How many was in that line? Uncle Bill? And this is just one, one day of I three. Mean, I, I would say there had to be like, there was like 10 rows of people. I'd say there had to be maybe 200 people like staying at a hundred dollars a a pop and oh, yeah. then this was just one of three days he was doing the photo ops um so it's the amount of money that's exchanging hands at these shows now is unbelievable yeah. compared to what it was I, I wish i knew that you guys were just getting the photo with him when i know those pro photo ops are really nice and everything but he was doing selfies at his table and i would have more, been more than happy to give you guys one of my line skips to the vip just because he was like 60 bucks for a selfie at his table uh, well that would have been killed. here's the thing though this is one of the last things i want to talk about conventions because we talk about conventions so goddamn much it's like funny, funny. <laughs> but here's what i'm like conventions are carnivals look at it like this there's some games at a carnival you cannot fucking win you you think you could win Right, but you'll never you'll never beat them. The system like, is against you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The, yeah. The whole house is against you. And like it's all rigged. For me, it's like you the photo op thing, you're never gonna come out like on that, like at all. It's no. so like Crater was saying, like the professional photo op thing, fucking that's one of the worst things that ever happened to conventions. One of the worst things that ever happened to like shows or anything like that is that fucking shit. But like that's just one of those. You just well, you got to go into a convention nowadays, like knowing it's a carnival, and just skip the shit you know you can't win on, and like play the stuff, like do the tables and stuff that you know you have a chance of having some sort of human interaction with, and that ain't usually <laughs> the celebrities. Perfect that we description. Tell you that. It's a perfect description. Like, too. Yeah, like, you guys have been doing this a lot longer than I have because I didn't start going to cons until two thousand nine. Uh, so it's been like 15 years for me. So I've, yeah, I've learned my lesson in a lot of ways when it comes to these carnies at these cons and stuff and you know, what, what their main intentions are. And so fuck that, you know, so but they're starting on them carnies. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, I mean, it's what they it operate, is. Yeah. They, they yeah. look at us as marks. Somebody's yeah. coming along. How much money can we get out of this poor fucking nerd? Right? Well, we've got, you know, if you want a photo, we'll do a photo. If you want a signature, do we, we'll do it. We'll do both. You know, we'll fucking do a professional photo op, and then we'll do a photo op with with us in a fucking costume. Oh. And then if that doesn't get <laughs> you, then you, you buy one of our eight by tens. We'll charge you for that. Like it's like. Well, we were talking to uh, Sean Clark and just basically giving him a hard time. We were like, well, I can remember when. <laughs> I couldn't remember when it was free to get these autographs at convention. He's like, you know how many fucking times I hear that at every show? <laughs> and I'm like, dude, seriously, like, congratulations, because that, I mean, it's how he makes money at these shows. 
10% of every photo op, autograph, or whatever, I mean, hell, that's a good gig. I have no issue with people charging that and taking, I mean, they are taking advantage of people, I guess, but these people love it. I mean, it's like yeah, people that, that love getting shit on. There's people out there that like to get, sh <laughs> they like to get the, the chili dog. I've heard that. I've yeah. heard those gonna They're say. into that. <laughs> Yeah. So, so if they want to throw at eighty bucks, hundred bucks, why do I don't know. It? I don't know, man. I, I I think that the Walking Dead and Anthony, you, maybe you know, like what? What do you think the pricing? Because it it skyrocketed real quick there, you know, between the span of two or three years. Because I can remember, like Kane Hodder is charging eighty dollars now. Yeah, and I'm like. What the and word? he always has a line and he does yeah. so many shows. I was like, how do these people all like I guess they just missed up the opportunity, so they're in line now. You know, it, it's like when I before I started working the Monster Mania shows back in like 2014 when I met Robert England, he was charging 40, and then I went downstairs and I saw Tyrese who played like in a season of Walking Dead charging like 65, 70 dollars. And I was like, uh oh, this is not gonna stay the same for forever and next thing you know it's just everything just started increasing from there like you just i just saw that that wave roll back of like all right now it's all walking dead this and that and all these prices of all these older you know stars i guess are just raising their price now robert england's a 140 or 155 an autograph or 160 i think something like that when i worked sam raimi's table that was a hundred dollars an auto so people were whipping out stacks of hundreds getting all shit signed i mean it's it's crazy i think um that, you know, it, it's, you know, to see people come to the show for the first time, I understand. Like Sam Raimi, that was the first time he was at Monster Mania. I get it. People are going to spend however much. But some people just come back to these people that have been there forever and they're still getting stuff signed. I'm like, yeah. all right, I guess your yeah. collection never ends. But you got to put a cap on it sometime. Like to yeah. see the same person like Kane Hodder for the 16th time and all, you know, and that's, you know, good for them. If, if the stars can make a living, that's fine. But goddamn, like some of these people are like. They're just spending money out their ears. It's crazy. Uh, that's that's kind of what I was gonna say. Like back to what you guys were saying a few minutes ago. There, there is just a built-in audience of people in the general public that that no matter what, they just go to these shows every time, and they will see. There are people out there that will go to damn near every celebrity at the convention and get things signed, and it seems like they have no problem with it. It, and that's just i i don't want to i don't i'm not really not trying to shit on those type of people but <laughs> you know that's just not me like I, right. I i will never i can't i can't understand it if that brings you joy and that makes yeah. you right. it makes your year or whatever to meet these people that's great i personally don't see how fulfilling that can be especially with the variance of how some of these celebrities act and how varying the experiences can be at their tables where you really are tossing a coin a lot of times you know if, if it's not the celebrity themselves that you have a bad experience with it's one of the handlers it's one of the table mm. workers being you know acting like they're working for the fbi or yeah. something uh, like that yeah. and, and secret it, service it, yeah exactly the secret service and and but there is a built-in audience of people that is, yeah. that they will go to these shows until until the bomb drops. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, it does yeah. not matter. He's yeah, right. but God, that's why I respect Tom Savini. He'll be a complete dick to you at his table, but he's only going to charge you twenty twenty five dollars. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's true. It. But he will be yeah. a dick to you. So Matt, that's I know the, exactly that's, what you that's mean. That's the cover page. Back in my day, though, he was a dick you know. to you, and it was for free. Yeah. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> what were you saying? You, well, I know exactly what you mean. I bumped into a guy a couple years back. He was – this was uh, Kane Hot. not to pick on Kane Hodder too much because he's a cool guy, but, I mean, he was charging a different amount of money for, like, a photo op of him in the Friday 7 costume with or without the mask and i saw like this guy he was like i'm getting back in line and i'm like wait you, you already got your picture you got your photo op he's like no i'm going for like without the mask so i'm like wait you got one with and without so it, wow. yeah, it's 
it's weird. Like some of these people that they don't care. Like they just they'll pay whatever just to get that experience. Right. Yeah, and I've seen I've seen that same thing, Mark. Like I've seen people <laughs> on these. Like there's a fans of Horror Hound Weekend group on Facebook. Yeah, yeah, I've I've been there, yeah. a lot of people that will go to those uh, Horror Hound shows that get the photo ops. They'll get like two or three different photo ops with that same person and just do like different poses in each photo. I'm like, right. It's got to be like some kind of drug, you know, that endorphin release of like, oh my God. Like, and I guess I'm just, and a lot of us in here, like, it just doesn't do that for us. Like, don't get me wrong. I've had great times meeting this, most of the celebrities that I have met, but I'm not going to these shows for that, for that specifically you know yeah. and, and if i have if if there's someone that i really want to meet and i have a good experience with them then cool but you know i'm so like some people just don't seem to be mind conscious of like the pricing of it and i'm just one of those people i'm like you know once it, you start over, they just, just don't just care about it. yeah, yeah. It's just like come right. on like really yeah like where some of us would save you know the money for like a. Uh, a, like you know, someone who would come along that isn't always doing the show and then spend money on on that, they would just rather continuously spend, and that's just I guess what that's what they want to do with for you know because I I would rather just wait for somebody to be at this show that you know they never get okay then spend your money on that you know because you're gonna probably wait the longest like we were saying earlier like it's a gamble of if you're gonna get there or not um or if you have to spend money on the VIP jump the line just so you can avoid waiting for five hours you know what i mean it's more money you got to spend but at least you're not spending you know the money on kane hodder again or cj graham and again no offense to these guys but they're, they're there all the time versus someone who you know is older in age maybe you might want to get them if they don't do shows like they got clive barker coming in august and he's going to be done soon so it's like you know clive barker's going to have like his room's going to be all done up with his paintings that are like two grand to five grand, you know, like it's going to be done up like pretty well. And I guarantee you there's going to be people that are going to do Clyde Barker and then go right back down, get the cane hotters, get the like again and again, it's just keeps yeah. repeating. Well, just, I congrats. think we, I think we did stumble onto something because like nostalgia is a drug, right? So it's like, right. You know, the more maybe you go up to these people, the more you kind of get that, that feeling of whatever you're trying to get. Um, so I don't, somebody said that the autograph, it'll never burst. I, I no. swear to God, it will never no. burst. Like we've been saying that for probably 10 years and it's never, bur- it's only going well, as like long as people more. continue to pay for it. That's the thing. Mm-hmm. Like they're the ones it's, that, you know, why do people, I'll, I'll go back to the carnival shit. Why do people still play those fucking games? They know right. they're not going to win. Like after you played them a hundred times, you know, you're that they win, might, but you it, know, find something just, different. Yeah, the playing. Like, it's just yeah. The, well, I think for us too, when we did these shows, like we're big poster collectors, me and Uncle Bill both. Um, we would like they do these cast reunions sometimes at these shows, like an Out of the Creeps reunion, Halloween reunion, whatever. And our thing is, is oh, we can go and get the cast signed, you know, twenty bucks a pop. For a poster, we just hit well over 200 people, by the way, watching us live. So we appreciate wow. uh, cool. everybody uh, tuning in and everything. So anymore, though, you're looking at 60, 70, 80 bucks a pop. I mean, it's just not worth it. Like, I'm not willing to spend that kind of money um, on I- any one person's autograph, let alone, like, the entire cast. Like, no. If it was old school pricing, even like thirty or forty a piece, yeah. Scream reunion or something like that, yeah, I'd probably be up for that. Like to get the original one sheet for the first yeah, that's, movie. That's the only way, man, that I would be able to do it nowadays. Cause like um, this last one, like uh, Scarefest of last year, it was they had a sleepaway camp reunion. I know Uncle Bill was able to get. I don't know if you got all, everybody that was there on there, but I got uh, everybody that was there. Yeah. Man, it's just that sh- Scarefest has gotten, I think, a little bit too big for its britches, man, because they had uh, no the joke. Eastern Kentucky saying, by the way. They, <laughs> no no joke. Over 70 celebrity guests at that show last year in October. And that is insane to me because there was a lot of people that I did want to meet, and I just I had to pick and choose, you know, because it when I, was do- I started doing this years ago, like – I was going to like multiple shows a year, like one maybe every other week or one every month. Uh, and, you know, I was able to afford you know, pretty, and meet pretty much everybody at these shows, you know, on on my budget. And now, like, you, I go to these shows and I maybe on that same budget that I had 15 years ago, I want to be meeting like three people. 
Yep. And that's it. I mean, you can turn it around and talk about, you know, well, we all spend money on our personal collections, like, you know, yeah. buying uh, these Blu-rays and and. Well, do you think the studios and... are enabling that too for for I people don't... to go back and constantly get shit signed because they're always putting out releases? So it's like yeah. the studios and are also. I don't ever end either, by the way. Yeah. Like people will keep buying like every release of movies that they really really like, like over and over and over again. That'll. I, that'll think, con- I think it's worse with the conventions though, because that is such. Uh, I don't know if like. <laughs> I don't know if predatory is the right word about it, but it kind of is. Like, with, like I've said you know. this for fucking years, <laughs> yeah. Matt. And nobody, I know. Like, people, people will counter argue this to death, but there is a subgroup of people that cannot not like buy stuff and go up to these people at these conventions. And it's That's like, it is preying about. upon them. It's like some sort of weird cult kind of like thing where, like, and I feel like. I don't want to say it's a mental illness or anything like that, but I feel like there are a lot of people that have an obsessive kind of personality mm-hmm. that go to these things and they get preyed on by these fucking people. And the people are like, well, fuck, you know, if they want to spend the money, it's their money and they're having a good time. Are they though? Or fucking like yeah. people that are broke at casinos Uncle having Bill. a good time or fucking people that are like if somebody alcohol having a good time. I don't <laughs> fucking think they are. If people continuously come up to a table that you're at and are forking over $80, to get you to scribble your name on something, you're going to be like, "Good to meet you." It is. Kind of on, come on, yes, they are. But what you I'm saying is, there's, there's something that that, so. that is more various than these fucking shows, and people want to admit, and that's it. they take advantage of fucking a subgroup of people that fucking will do any of this. St- I'm telling you, man. Like I know, like what the the counter argument to this is, but. I'm telling you, we know people that are obsessed with like certain things. And if if somebody was like, it's two thousand dollars, they would fucking give them two thousand dollars. And I just think it's exploitation in a yeah. way. Like and the that, shit that's going on nowadays is exploitation. And that brings up a good point, Uncle Bill, because you know, uh, you all have discussed this in the past about The Walking Dead is what really changed these conventions years ago as far as, you know, the prices and everything that's going on with these shows now. And it's interesting to me that that Walking Dead it ended up getting its own convention, which is Walker Stalker Con. I think they have it down in Atlanta, Georgia. Mm-hmm. Um, and to, I, don't, I may be wrong, but other than like Star Trek conventions, is that like the only like series or anything like based on a movie or anything like that that has its own like themed convention? I think so. I mean, I don't. I can't think of anything else. I mean, I know they do like um, the stuff at the uh, Monroeville Mall, but that's like just its own. Right, that's kind of like kind of like its own little theme. Yeah, there like, is like those star that Star Wars convention now that like Disney puts on. I heard about that. Or yeah. Whatever. yeah. I think that's like the only other thing that I can think right. of at least. So it's mostly like sci-fi stuff, but it was, yeah, right. yeah. I think before like, like before um, they mostly died. Dark Shadows. Yeah, they did. Own, like seven yeah. convention. That's interesting. I don't know if they still do that now because a lot of those people are not. But they used to like all the time. It was mostly in California. Though. Wow. I didn't know that. One other thing that I had. And we talk about physical media a lot on the show, of course. It's like a big thing. All these labels coming out with these announcements each month. And most of the time, they let us down. And I'm almost getting to where it's entertaining in (laughs) some of these titles that they they are coming out with. Like, I don't want to pick on anybody in particular, but this time we're we're picking on Terror Vision. Oh, man. Um, (laughs) And these guys, man, they made like, I don't know how many different announcements last fall. 50, 60% of those titles never seen the light of day and they're announcing more shit. And it's stuff that like, I don't, are, are they dressing up turds here or what are they doing? Because some of these movies and un, an old Kung Fu master on Blu-ray Satanic, Pop Atopolis, a documentary on Jim Wynorski, The Nail Gun Massacre, which is the only one that I've heard of. And if anybody's ever seen this movie, 
you'll really laugh when you hear that they're coming out with this motherfucker in 4K. <laughs> oh, man, come on. Yes, they are. Honey, that movie will benefit from 4K. <laughs> so it's almost like they're used car salesmen now or something. They're like, they're trying to convince an audience that, yes, you need these titles. You need Papatopoulos and Nailgun That's Massacre and Satanic and all this shit you've never heard of. That's the game now, though, ain't it? People yeah. will buy it. People will buy it just, just to have it in their collection. They may not even ever watch it. They just want it in their collection. That's the equivalent well, vinegar of the syndrome. convention people. Yeah, it is. well, Vinegar mm -hmm. Syndrome set, they really, like, pioneered this approach, which is the approach of, like, we we can't really afford the rights to big-name movies, so let's get movies that nobody's ever fucking heard of, and we'll put really awesome <laughs> packaging on it, and mm -hmm. people will fucking buy it, and they have. And mm -hmm. now, like, right. that's what's moved. But now the movies are getting, these other companies are getting progressively shittier, if you can imagine that. But they still have killer like on, how, artwork. How you gonna buy the Last Slumber Party, but you're not gonna buy the Nail Gun Massacre? Well, <laughs> which, which I didn't I buy. I didn't buy Last Slumber Party. Blame that on Uncle I'll, Bill. I'll let you in on a fucking secret right now. Exactly. I bought the Last Slumber Party and the fucking Nail Gun Massacre. So how about that? I have no fucking shame. But what I'm saying, you're being wasteful, Uncle Bill. Well, shame these, on you. These fucking well, hey. like it's hey, getting hey. progressively like. In more insane, like these movies that they're coming out with. I don't know where they're finding this shit now. I mean, at least like with a tile like Nail Gun Massacre, you know at some point, like the Code Red Blu-ray, whenever it's gone, it's going to sell for a pretty penny, especially like for it being on 4K. I mean, I don't know why, but that movie, like if you look at the Code Red Blu-rays, last time I checked, they were like before the announcement, like sixty to a hundred dollars, depending on if it was like the Synapse DVD or the Code Red Blu-ray. Really, I want to sell mine, and I've got the Synapse DVD. Let's sell that some bitch. Because that movie is not good. Yeah, at it all. probably dropped, of course, because where the 4K came out. But I mean, you can still probably get maybe twenty, thirty bucks out of it. That's a movie that I never really want to watch again, so I'm fine selling it. It's the Blu-ray dilemma. That's what all this is. It's. <laughs> <laughs> four okay. kids awesome. things coming soon i'm telling you four kids four. things coming soon i'm <coughs> sure i'm sure uh terror oh, will probably come out with it that'll definitely be out yeah i thought yeah. that was already out to be honest. christ no but there'll um be a of that. there'll be a 4k of everything for fuck's sake <laughs> skin of a ring 4k Oh, God. oh man! I'm surprised that's not already out. Yeah. <laughs> they got the steel book at Walmart. All right, Walmart, Walmart is holding the porch. Look at this the lamp. <laughs> Look at the floor. There's carpet. <laughs> now there's not. <laughs> like a there's magic a toilet. Tree. Now there's. I, not. I hear some old time radio no. hour on too, boys. What the hell? <laughs> um, I can't believe they made a steel book for that. Wow, unbelievable. Jesus. Well, the steel books now, Scheme Factory, you're doing the. Didn't they do the Blood and Honey steel book as well? Yeah, there you was. Can, a... You cannot love Terror Vision, Michael Sharp. I'm sorry, but nobody loves Terror Vision. <laughs> speaking, speaking of steel books, have you guys picked up any of those $5 ones from Walmart lately? I picked up. I haven't seen any. It was the only one I picked up. No, I, I know Walmart is. Um, they're they're kind of like the last. Uh, you know, store that's going to be carrying these steel books at least for mm -hmm. now. Um, so they're going to be holding that torch at least to be able to like walk in and still get a steel book somewhere. Um, because Best Buy was the place, and now all those Best Buy steel books have now all become Walmart steel books now. <laughs> so I mm -hmm. guess they're going to be doing that until I mean, I don't know if you guys saw this, but Target just announced this mm -hmm. week that by the yeah. end of this year, yeah, they're going to start cutting back on the movies and shows in their in their stores. So it's, oh, it's going to be going to Walmart. Out. Yeah, Walmart's already cutting back on their video games like heavy, so the movies will yeah, be back. That, that Target thing, I think, started out as a rumor, but um, I'm pretty sure the guy that broke the news on that is the same guy that broke the news with the rumor on Best Buy. So yeah, and, well, and it's it's it seems like it's happening a lot more quickly with some of these. So most Targets have already scaled back quite a bit, though, compared mm -hmm. to like the ones that I've been into. So. Can definitely yeah, I see never that. see anything in a Target. Target Within the never the place I ever went for movies. I always thought they had a shit selection anyway. And right. 
least the ones near me did. And and it they never put any effort into what they were carrying. It was a lot of ma- just a lot of old absolute, shit. It seemed you know, the like, absolute mainstream of of stuff. That's like pretty much it that I ever saw. Mm-hmm. Yeah, same here. There was like the occasional cool exclusive that they had every now and again, but yeah, I never went to Target for fifty. Yeah, we, we don't even have a Target here in Eastern Kentucky, so fuck them. <laughs> yeah, we got one in Barberville, but I think like it was the didn't didn't it, they have to close it or something for the foundation was caving in know. on it or something. Yeah, like that. Well, yeah, did. that one did, and it, yeah. like the line actually hit like right where the Target logo was on the corner. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> wow. I fucking hate I hate Target overall. Anyway, that's like one Me store too. that my wife loves to go in, and we never Thanks. ever buy anything in Target ever. So no, we go in there and walk around. <laughs> I actually like Target better than Walmart, around here at least, because when you go into Walmart, it's literally like you're on the website people of Walmart every time. It's true. Target, oh, God, yes. Target well, that's, I feel that's like Eastern is, Kentucky. Yeah. That's every store you go <laughs> in Eastern my, Kentucky. When I go into Target, it's calm, collected. Yes. There's nothing crazy going on. It's more yeah. just like, you know, I I can walk in here and feel safe. <laughs> Does Target yeah, accept no. EBT cards? My best. <laughs> I don't know. Hey, you got to take a chance, Matt. You know, you might get stabbed or something. I had to. Oh Walmart, yeah. But yeah Wally, Wally World is uh, literally we live like less than five minutes from one. <laughs> yeah. So yeah, we go. But all like, I, I don't understand stores like Target, and I don't understand stores like TJ Maxx. That's one that like Savannah loves, and I she fucking, I never want to go in that. It's like a. It's like a little bit fancier big lots. That's what TJ Maxx is. Well, it's Mar- like, Marshalls and TJ Maxx is like the, the same fuck? thing, I think. Right? People mm-hmm. like those stores, man. I'm like, cheap clothes. I'd love to cheap. know. That's it. It's, it's cheap. The, yeah, they get it's a lot cheap of cheap clothes, of name brand stuff, but the clothes rarely ever fit correctly, which is <laughs> probably discounted. Am I, I don't get it either. Am I wrong on this, or is, does TJ Maxx like sell like collectibles and action figures and stuff like that now too? Like. Big discount prices. I think they sell like Funko Pops and stuff like yeah. that. Oh, okay. Only thing I saw in there's like lamps and fucking shower curtains, <laughs> 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 like, stools. They sell yeah, a lot of stools, a bunch in there. of clothes, and then a bunch of old junk that they've got weird dog up way too high. <laughs> uh, yeah, listen, got... Wawa is the shit. Okay, don't no one trash talk Wawa in the chat. Come on now. <laughs> Yeah, what the hell? I'm old. I'm I'm thinking of stuff like Shopcore and Pomida, and people like, what the fuck are those? <laughs> what the hell are those? Like, I'm getting real old. Jesus, Target is or still you feels wanna, like a you new. You want to get old, buddy? We'll talk about hex and aims and shit in here. You know about hills? <laughs> right Anybody know about God. hills? <laughs> Heels, Heels department stores. <laughs> yep. hey, Heels, Heels was a killer store back in the day. Yeah, my that's mom that's where I bought all like the Nintendo games that I bought. Like Heels was fucking amazing. Yeah, yeah she worked there. Been, I think up until yeah. I was like Children's four Palace. or five. Did you guys but, ever have a Montgomery Wards? Is that a thing around anywhere? Not in yeah. town, but I remember them. Used uh, to be one back. Then. That's where I used to get all my Nintendo games. Back we had day. a fucking sundry store back in the day, didn't we, Uncle Bill? That was some, <laughs> that was some killer shit. I don't even know how to explain what the sundry store John was. John Ramey's before. mom worked at the sundry store. You remember yeah. that? By God. I, I remember <laughs> was, there was a store called Roses. Uh, it was kind of like Walmart and stuff, I guess. Um, and I can remember back in... <sighs> like, well, I can't really remember it because I was really too young, but I, I was about probably three years old at the time because this was at the high right right when ninja turtles was getting really popular and stuff and i think um my mom like bought me the whole first wave of the ninja turtles action figures when they first came out and uh still have those somewhere around here i'm pretty sure You banned Jay. All right, wasn't really Jay real, was it? Why did that wasn't fucking Jay real? <laughs> no. <laughs> I, was like, I, was like, well, I was like, has Jay real been drinking tonight? <laughs> <laughs> but guys, hey, it's been fun. We try to keep these right at two hours. But I know a lot of you guys have your your own pages and everything. I know Phantasmat, you've been uploading some stuff recently on your page. You got anything new coming up? No, I mean. I don't have a plan or a game plan whatsoever with like, as far as my channel goes, like I just up uploaded that video of my unboxing for a, um, 
custom made ghost face mask that's actually the mask from scary movie so it's not ghost face but um yeah that that i just uploaded the other day and it's a killer mask i mean ironically yeah, it's called the killer i think in the movie but i love scary movie and that's something we didn't really talk about but you know they're remaking that or rebooting it or whatever but um of course it's the regular mask that they never mass produced or actually put out for you know that people could buy so i found a custom made one um so you can check that out if you want but uh i mainly stick to like instagram for like daily activity on social media but uh yeah i mean speaking of scary movie <laughs> hell yeah yeah <laughs> that's awesome they did sell that mask right i've seen that before they did I, I show that in my video yeah i have the tongue the the what's up mask uh so but that's a cool mask that i got you can check that video out um other than that i don't really have a game plan as far as what i'll do next so it's kind of just a whatever whenever i decide so that's right. how i roll cool alfa romero does all things romero on his channel yeah. what you got anything, coming up man anything in the romero universe uh well it's funny actually or well, i guess it was a couple weeks ago now i actually just put up the Juice on the Loose documentary that Romero directed back in the early 70s. Yeah. And then two days later, OJ died. So that's good timing uh, there. Yeah, <laughs> really. I kind of feel Not, like bad luck. Nice work, Al. Yeah. You did it. What the hell? <laughs> so, uh, so yeah, if you, if you, anybody's interested in checking out that documentary in honor of the life and times of OJ Simpson, it's on my channel right now. But also try to do a live stream at least once a week, every weekend just talking about whatever the fuck I'm interested in talking about every week. Try to keep it to the Romero universe, Romero, John Russo, <laughs> and everything in that era. Yeah, I, I recently, get John Russo's old ass on there. Get him on there for I, an I'm interview. Hey! I, I just recently <laughs> watched uh, Midnight for the first time, and there's something about it that I kind of kind of like. I like, like Midnight. Like, I, I don't think know it's why. Russo's masterpiece or something yeah. like, a, you know. But uh, so, there's yeah, some other know. reason that that movie's good and it doesn't have anything to do with Russo, though. I don't know what it is, but <laughs> yeah, it just has a credit. weird, it has a weird vibe to it that I like. But uh, but yeah, it's at uh, at Alpha Romero 88. So if you guys are interested in that, check that out. Nice stuntman Mark, man. What are you getting in from Germany and we'll talk about? <laughs> <laughs> uh, actually, I do have a few things on the way, as always. But um, I'll save that for when those actually arrive. Next thing I will be doing for sure is a uh, live commentary with the guy right below me. And it's on Alien for Alien Day. Cool. So, uh, so um, that's about it. When is Alien Day? This Friday. Yep. Ooh. Okay. The 26th. Mm -hmm. I guess it's the 4th the or 5th anniversary. It's crazy. That movie's almost 50 years old. Wow. Know, right? It's Damn. wild. Yeah, 45 awesome. years ago. That's insane. Ryan, have you got anything? I know you have a podcast with Sean from uh, Scareflare, but it's kind of still on hiatus. Is that right? Yeah, we're still on hiatus. Uh, the only thing I got planned is uh, if you're still up for this weekend, that's it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I don't know if it's going to be this weekend or next weekend. I'll let you know. Okay. What about uh, you, Crater? You got anything coming up? I know you guys started your own uh, well, show. Yeah, we did. That's well, that's kind of Candace's and her brother's like uh, deal that they're doing. I'm I'll probably be on there every now and then, just kind of like how I'm doing stuff right now. Every now and then with Dana, uh, we've been doing like watch alongs, and I'd, I've done a couple episodes of that Robert England retrospective thing she's doing. Um, you know, She's getting I, really hardcore. To, if you're including Chud uh, too as a Robert England movie, <laughs> well, she's going to be doing that series for years. Well, I don't think she. I think she decided <laughs> against that one. Oh, uh, okay. She, she watched it and she said he just kind of like walks through the frame. Now you see his ass in it. That's about it's it. It's really not worth me, you know, put doing a uh, review over that. You know, as far as that show goes, but yeah, I tried I mean, to tell her I was for like, years. Oh. <laughs> Eventually, I think, you know, I, I've said this for years that I was like, I'm going to do my own channel and talk about stuff that I want to talk about. And I just, I was like, ah, well, I better not. Maybe I got other stuff going on. But, you know, I think doing a lot of these streams I've been doing, like with, with you guys and with Dana and whoever, you know, it's really like 
got me like interested more into YouTube and I've been checking out some of Rambo stuff, some of Mark stuff, you know, I'll probably check out some of your other guys, other guys on here, like Alfred Romero, Anthony, all your guys stuff, you know, cause I've never really been involved with YouTube a lot, like over the years, but now it's just finally starting to really pique my interest and maybe I should just, you know, it's a, it's a good outlet. You know, if you don't really have anybody in your area to talk about the stuff that you like, Absolutely. you know, there's always people out there on youtube oh yeah those things and the technology now too it makes it a lot more interesting get a lot more people involved in the chat and just doing things on here i mean we've got nine people on here all in different locations Uh, it's the technology just the way that it's moved in the you know four or five years has just been nuts Mm -hmm. yeah definitely rambo I know you got about 15 videos that's coming out tomorrow. <laughs> What's included, man? Yeah, at least that... in those three days. And there'll be another 20 after that. But yeah, the April 26th got a request for me and Mark to do a commentary on Alien. We'll be doing that. And uh, yeah, just doing more request things to people out there. Really appreciate it. But I, I do have one quick question. How much are you looking forward to Frey Pros Jr.'s new wrestling promotion? I'm sure you must be really oh, excited. Yeah. <laughs> I saw that. It's been a rumor for years. Now. Is Vince going to back it? Is he the? Because a lot of people were wondering what's he going to do with that two billion dollars. Uh, hold up, back up. Who's new promotion? <laughs> you heard it right. Fred, 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 Fred Jr. Jr. Yep. <laughs> oh man, Star Wing Commander wants to do a wrestling promotion. He's talked to the right people. It seems. Wow. Because he wrote for <laughs> WWE. And I'm a you roll for I'm, WWE for a while, so I follow wrestling regularly, like all promote, and that's the first I heard of that. Wow. Hopefully the I think last I saw somebody post something about it, but I didn't really look into like Vince has two billion dollars though, and people are wondering what in the hell he's gonna do with that. Because you know he's he's a competitive son of a bitch. Say what you want to about him. He is going to do something. I don't know if it's gonna be a wrestling promotion or or what, but He's he's still I've, got a couple of years left in me. Thanks. I've been seeing rumors that he's possibly going to start another promotion. I I don't know why he would. I mean, yeah, he's that's better off doing something else. Not a good idea. I don't think that's, so either. That'd be great. It's it's not gonna work. Ah, oh, it's a world <laughs> wrestling. Uh, 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 all all elite. We'll call it that. World wrestling all elite. Yeah. All entertainment <laughs> wrestling. I don't know, Anthony. What do you got coming at, man? You do a lot of video game stuff on your channel and uh, always have some stuff on there, I see. Yeah, yeah. I got uh, got a few uh, podcasts and live streams lined up that I'm going to be working on uh, leading into to May. And hopefully um, the project that I was uh, a part of in the filming process, The Keeper's Diary, which is a fan film uh, that's obviously based off Resident Evil, but it's a fan film that's completely backed by the fans and made for the fans. And that's hopefully going to be coming out on the Residents of Evil channel. I would say maybe in a couple weeks, I would say, hopefully we finally will get a date out there. But yeah, that's going to be coming up. And I'm uh, really looking forward to everybody seeing that because we're trying to make something, you know, that's a lot better than what Hollywood has given us. So we're trying to, you know, it's a short film, but hopefully it makes uh, the fans proud. So I'm really excited. I definitely gotta check out your channel then now, man, because Resident Evil, that's my favorite game series of all well, that's time. That's the channel you want to check out. Yeah, let's man. talk Resident Evil on YouTube. Let's talk Resident Evil. That's have it. have you heard anything more about that uh George Romero's Resident Evil documentary they're doing? Uh yeah, Brandon Salisbury actually was he was around on the set when we were doing Keeper's Diary, and I was able to kind of talk to him a bit. And um, I want to have him on the show actually, just to kind of talk shop about that. I know he has a uh, some convention appearances he did with uh, Charlie Krislavsky, who did the uh, original Chris Redfield. So he was oh, yeah, kind of promoting it, doing a he was doing a couple. Um, I don't know if he actually screened it or screened parts of it, actually, at a uh, show. So I think it's coming out soon That's and awesome. hopefully we'll be able to uh, I'll have him on the show to talk more about it. So awesome. Cool. cool. So the next thing that we've got coming up is on Thursday night. It's the selection show for Spill Oil. Make that good. We're finally doing it <laughs> for 2023 or no, it's 2024. <laughs> 2024. God, I can't wait. For Who's going to be on the wheel, Uncle Bill? And what's going to be the deal? You'll find out. Find out soon, I guess. The, sele- the selection. Yeah. 
And uh, <laughs> Uncle Bill is bringing back a classic a week from tonight. Right? Tour of Italy. Season finale of Exploit Nation. Ah. Sunday, 10 o'clock, we're going to be doing Black Exploitation. Woo! Finally. <laughs> So every it was by popular demand. Everybody wanted it, so you're gonna get it. God help us all. What Fred Williamson movies y'all gonna be talking about? And that's what I want to know. Well, the a, here's here's the thing. There there is a poll up on the Discord where you can vote for like whatever movie. I know one of them is gonna be coffee, and that's the only one that I've chosen because I want to do that one. That's a great one. But like yeah. the rest of them are up for like debate. So any like whichever ones win are the ones that are gonna make it on the show. Mm. Yeah, so a lot of life them, I, that he didn't. <laughs> some of the ones on that list I had ne- I had never seen. So, you know, I'll definitely be watching some of those that that get picked. I'm sure there's going to be ones that I haven't seen on there. But Coffee is really great. I don't know if that across 110th Street counts because it's been a while since I'd seen it. I don't know how much of of like a black exploitation it is, but. I'd recommend it on Discord that even if even if it's not a black exploitation movie, it well, is thinking, a pretty good movie. I was thinking, man, because people were just saying one thing after another, but it's like there's over like there's hundreds of those movies. Like I have to have some sort of like list yeah. that I can narrow down. People what I can do random, you know, shit. Well the the Discord is pretty like it's kind of a private thing for the patrons. I can put a copy of the poll up on YouTube as well. That way more people can vote, maybe. Yeah. So we'll we'll combine the two that way. But, Uncle uh, Bill, have you ever done uh, that film, the the thing with two heads? Do you know that one? I know the I know the film, but I've never done it. It's no. where like you know, it's like the, <laughs> the guy he's got t- two heads, and one of them is a black guy. <laughs> one of them, yeah, the white guy. Yeah, I've I've actually seen that movie and actually liked it quite a bit, but I just didn't even think to put that up there as an option. Oh, man, that would be a good one. <laughs> There's cover. a lot of them that like. A lot of them that I didn't even think about that people brought up after the fact, but I mean, there's almost ten movies on there. It's like it can only be so many, you know, for people to to narrow down. So yeah, that'll be a week from tonight. The poll probably lasts what through Tuesday or Wednesday, you think? Yeah, because at some point I got to actually watch the shit. So yeah, yeah. So everybody else does. But, it's uh, going to be on the show. Whoever's going to be, I swear to God. <laughs> You all gonna be on this fucking show. It ain't gonna just be me. <laughs> yeah, hey, hey. yeah. That's Uncle Bill on there. Uncle Bill on there, boss. So you, you need you to do the, talk about the all these dancing movies, so. routine. Do the Ted dancing routine. Some people get that. Catch up Ted dancing. Uh, no. <laughs> the song right, the gonna be on there. That's black exploitation, right? The song the south. That's a black fortune. God. Yes, yeah. <laughs> Good night, everybody. It's fucking. <laughs> All right. Appreciate everybody. Uh, everybody in the chat. We had over 200 people at one point. So uh, <laughs> lots of people commenting and everything. And appreciate everybody joining us. And we will do this again next month here on Dead Pets. <laughs> Dot com. I'm scared. Give us a thumbs up. <laughs> Off you butts. Like subscribe and if you subscribe here's something else you can do once you subscribe you can click the bell notification right and it'll notify you anytime that dead pit picks up new shit poor dog i really don't give a fuck i want you to i want you to (laughs) let's let's keep our community growing here i don't i don't don't like it i don't want you to do nothing listen they need to do that no don't you dare touch it Thumbs up, subscribe, and click that bell. There's all kinds of wonderful shirts over at shop.deadpits.com. Simply the best horror shirts on Tee Public. There are others, but they all suck. You can get some Dead Pit Radio shirts. You can get Last South on the left. The hills have eyes. Texas Chainsaw. Oh, wait, you can't say Texas Chainsaw. All kinds of shirts, folks. You're going to love them. Shop.deadpit.com Thank you to all of our supporters on Patreon. Deadpit on Patreon.com is the only place to check out a complete archive of the old Dead Pit radio shows all the way back from 2005 on in addition to the midweek shows, fan commentaries, 
exclusive podcasts, and much more. Dead Pits on Patreon.com if you're interested. Tiers start at only $1.